the MetLife Group Snoopy One, high above the Marine Midland Arena, resplendent in all its glory. Tonight, it hosts the NHL opener, regular season of the Buffalo Sabres and Detroit Red Wings, and also a tribute to the Sabres founder. Hello, everybody. This is Rick Jenneret with Jim Lorenz and Dennis Williams here at the Marine Midland Arena. We are looking forward to not only mm -hmm. a great hockey game between the Buffalo Sabres and the Detroit Red Wings, but I have a feeling maybe a bit of a teary-eyed salute <laughs> as well. Huh? Uh, I should say. Uh, and, of course, uh, Seymour H. Knox III is going to be honored uh, before tonight's game. And, see, I go back uh, with Seymour back to 1972 when I was traded to the Buffalo Sabres from the New York Rangers. And one of the first people I met was Seymour. And I knew from the first time I met him that he was a very special man. During the years uh, as a player and then as a broadcaster, uh, he became even more special. And uh, I think of him now uh, often uh, with great affection. Uh, he's the reason that we're here tonight, without question. Uh, it was his dream, his uh, incredible determination, uh, his skill, and I think most of all his love for the team, for Buffalo, and for this city that this team still is here in, in uh, downtown Buffalo. Uh, he is uh, just a, a special person, and it's so fitting and so right that he's going to be honored tonight. And we are going to see a show that I am sure, in fact, I know that Seymour Knox III would have been very, very proud of. This is going to be an enormous evening to kick off the regular National Hockey League season here at the Marine Midland Arena. The Detroit Red Wings, one of the greatest teams in the league, are there to provide the opposition. And now we are set to go downstairs for the start of tonight's proceedings. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the Marine Midland Arena and the 1996-97 season home opener. Tonight is a very special night as we pay tribute to the founder of the Buffalo Sabres, Mr. Seymour H. Knox III. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to an evening of celebration. Tonight, we do not mourn the passing of Seymour Knox III. Oh no, we celebrate his legacy, his vision, and his passion for sport and community as we sit in the house that Seymour built. If Seymour was here tonight, he would ask his fellow fans to join in this celebration in what would have been his finest hour. The spirit of Seymour Knox III lives on. My brother Nori and I are by no means known as gamblers. However, in 1970, we gambled that Buffalo would be a great place for a National Hockey League franchise. And we won that gamble. And we won because of you, Buffalo's great sports fans.
the heart and soul of the Sabres, the creator of the franchise who has worked so hard for so many years on behalf of our team. We would not be here tonight except for his perseverance and his leadership. He is an extraordinary human being, a wonderful guy, and we owe him a huge debt of gratitude. gentlemen, please welcome the Knox family. G. Knox, Connie, Reed, Nancy, Avery, Gus, Arabella, Avery, Helen, Bob, Jack, Seymour the fifth, and ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Seymour H. Knox the fourth. political leaders, the architects, the terrific construction crews, and finally to you, the world's greatest fans, for helping make my father's dream a reality. When you admire the building, think of my dad, Seymour H. Knox III, whose presence is ever here with all of us. Godspeed.
Ladies and gentlemen, there will now be a short six-minute intermission. shows a week. 43 carriage rides and a lot of hot dogs. You keep living, we'll keep paying. If you've been thinking about pursuing a career in sports or upgrading your current education for promotion, or maybe you've been thinking about a career change, then you should think about the Masters of Science and Sport Administration program at Canisius College. One of only four programs of its kind in the country, the Sport Administration program has formed affiliations with major professional sports organizations across the country. And with our highly experienced and qualified faculty, the Masters of Science and Sport Administration at Canisius College is the one program in Western New York for you. Call now for more information. local Jeep and Eagle dealer. What is Pro Shop Buffalo Hardwood? They're do-it-yourself hardwood floors and floor care products. Western New York's largest and best place for original Pergo laminate floors. The largest selection of Carhartt rugged wear. Buffalo Hardwood. We'll show you how. Sabres Hockey is brought to you in part by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you fresh beer tastes better. By Dodge, the new Dodge. See your team Dodge dealer today. And by Pepsi. Nothing else is a Pepsi. Welcome back to opening night at the Marine Midland Arena. I'm Dennis Williams, and I'm joined by Larry Quinn, the president and CEO of the Marine Midland Arena. Larry, a stirring and emotional tribute. Yeah, it really was. It's sad. He's such a terrific guy, and I um, wish he could be here. I just, just very sad, emotional night. What are your memories, your fondest memories about him and what he'd feel on this night? He's the most beautiful man I ever met. You don't get too many chances in life when somebody believes in you, and he did, and he gave me so much confidence in what I was doing and the people that we were working with, and, and so much confidence in the city of Buffalo. And if everybody believed what he did, this would be the greatest city in the country, which I believe it will. From a personal standpoint, how rewarding is this for you to see this night and see it come off like this? Well, it's personally rewarding, but it's sad at the same time because uh, this great partner isn't here but I know he's here spiritually and and I say that and in my heart I wish he was still here did, did things in this building turn out the way that you expected they turned out a lot better I, I, there's so many great people that work on this and when you get the collective help of hundreds and really a thousand people working on this it's so good and I, I so happy with everybody's effort it looks so great and I hope the fans enjoy it as much as I'm enjoying it, which I think they are what do you expect from the hockey team tonight? I think those guys are going to beat these Red Wings and knock them all over the place. How about um, more on the arena and the way things have turned out for you? I mean, do you believe that this is exactly what Seymour had in mind? Yes, I do. And, and Seymour had so much to do with this. Um, Seymour was a detail guy. He always called you up every day. He had his list. If it, you didn't get it done, it stayed on that list, and he kept on you and on you, and, and uh, he looked at everything. And Nordy, too, I, I don't want to leave Nordy out, and John Regas, uh, sort of this sort of triumvirate of people that worked on this. 
and they, they pick the colors of this pile I'm standing on. I mean, that's how much detail they got into, and it's this wonderful testimony to them. In a day and age when um, small market cities are losing NHL teams, how are the Buffalo Sabres still here? Is that all Seymour Knox the third? Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up because we're a Canadian city. We're on the border. We're U.S. Canadian. Uh, they, they, you know, we lost Winnipeg. We lost uh, some of the Quebec, and we're going to make it work here. And I'm so so excited about this. And we're going to teach the sort of the big bullies of the world, the New York Rangers, who spend 50 million bucks on their payroll. That we're going to make it work here. And I'm really proud of our city and what people here have done. And that vision again is Seymour's. It's Seymour's. It's Nordy's. It's John Regis's. It's Bob Suedos's. Uh, the thing that if you know, knew Seymour, Seymour wasn't this big ego guy. He was a team guy. And then we have these tremendous people all together here, uh, great board of directors and people working together. So it's the vision of a lot of people, and I think he would have wanted it that way. How about the new era in this team, in this organization? Do you feel that the Sabres this year are going to take it to a new level and then move? I mean, the youth movement was, was seen on this road trip, and it's obvious now that the team is going in a positive direction. Well, I think young guys learn a lot about their team by their first year of experience. Uh, we had a very emotional unveiling of the plaque of Seymour and Nordy today before the game. Bob Engel from Marine Bank made a really, I thought, very stirring speech about the fact that when you wear your crest on your uniform, it's the closest thing to your heart. And what this game is all about is heart. There's a lot of talent in this league. Every team, I think, is as talented as the next. Um, but what really happens is that young players the Jimmy Schoenfels, the Danny Gares, the Rick Martins, the Gilbert Perros, just said, hey, I'm going to be as good as anybody else. And these fellows down in the locker room, I think they've got it in them, and it's up to them, really. We're not playing the game, but um, I think they have the ability to say, I'm going to be a winner, and I'm going to go out with a lot of heart, and uh, I think they'll do it. Great. Thank you very much for joining us. It's an absolute pleasure. We're going to send it back upstairs to Rick and Jim. As we await now the uh, resurfacing of the ice, and the show is not over, folks. No, there are uh, some great things to come yet this evening. We're going to have all kinds of things happening here at the Marine Midland Arena. You're, well, I can give them a little clue, I suppose. Some fireworks, some pyrotechnics, and uh, I think that uh, what they're doing with this show, partner, is they're kind of set up the hockey game, and they're going to set it up big time when they see this Jumbotron in operation and everything else that's... As you look at uh, Nordy Knox and the empty seat that would have been occupied by Seymour and his lovely wife Jean on the other side. As they are a very emotional night uh, for us, oh, obviously, boy. but for the family. I mean, this is an incredible night. It's well, I can remember, uh, Rick, uh, when you and I were doing radio and what a great time we used to have to look down below us and there'd be Seymour with his headset on listening to the radio and you'd make some remark how do you, how do you like that place Seymour and he'd wave back up at us and but we'd he never a, turned around no he never <laughs> turned around he'd just wave or acknowledge it in, in some uh, in some way and well, look at that he, side yeah all right the Fort that Knox built uh, well we're awfully proud of this building and so are 18,595 in here tonight and now we are ready to resume folks
17, right winger Dixon Ward. Wearing number 17, left wing Jason Daw. Number 18, left wing Michael Grosset. And center number 19, how about Brian Holzinger? And center number 26, Steve Derek Plant. Number 27, and center, how about Michael Pekka? And right wing number 28, Donald. Get assistant equipment manager George Babcock. Ladies and gentlemen, put them together your 1996 97 Buffalo Sabres. Tonight's opponents, the Detroit Red Wings and head coach Scotty Bowman. Of the singing of the Canadian and U.S. national anthems with Henry Pendleton. I'm a boy. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, through faith and love, in all thy sons command, with love. Heart, we see thee rise, the true, no strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. For thee, O oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what's so proud? Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watch, first look and lately screaming, and the dark is red glare, the bursting in air, gave through the night that a 
Gus Knox, Jack Knox, and Seymour Knox, the fifth, for tonight's special ceremonial puck drop. Okay, do you want, do you want Dennis to ask one of them to just stand by? Okay. At this time, we would like to ask Steve Eisenman for the Detroit Red Wings, and of course your captain for the Buffalo Sabres, Mr. Pat LaFontaine, to the center circle for our ceremonial puck drop. excited youngsters to be involved in that ceremonial puck well, drop. The little guy is a real character. The, the little guy on the left, he, <laughs> he was dying to get out on the ice uh, this morning at the pregame skate. And he's, he's very outgoing. Well, they roll up the red carpet now and after a pretty impressive opening ceremony for this brand new $127.5 million edifice in downtown Buffalo. These fans who enjoyed the ceremony, no doubt about that, are all gunned up for you-know-what hockey. Mike Vernon, our starting goaltender, is brought to you by Buffalo Hardwood. Vernon, based on last season, because he's making his first start of this season for the Detroit Red Wings, will be the starting goaltender for Scotty Bowman's club. And, of course, you have to know Dominic Hatchick coming off a... Incredible performance in Vancouver right. on Wednesday night. People are, <laughs> people are still talking about the save that he made on Pavel Bure. Oh. Hashik was down on his back. Bure had the whole net to shoot at. And just as he shot, Hashik swung his arms back over his head and stopped the puck, much to the disbelief of Pavel Bure. Well, of course, Bure put his arms over his head, too, because he <laughs> thought he'd score. There he is. That's the man of the hour. Don Van Massenhoven will be wearing the red stripes. Brian Murphy. Uh, Guess what? Timmy Nowak, Buffalo's own, the other linesman, and I'm sure that he is really excited about being a participant in this, the first National Hockey League regular season game at the Marine Midland Arena. And we'll get things underway right now. Fedorov trying to kick it free, but it's covered up, and Shannon will smack it in off that seamless glass. Tipped around on the boards. Wings trying to get it out of there. Can't do it. Long shot. Vernon playing it in behind the net. Now it's fed around on the boards again. Kept in there by Buffalo. Shoveled by Daw. Out in front of Daw. The shot. Didn't get through. Back it comes to the point. Wilson whistles one in wide of the net. Vernon helping himself. Got it around on the boards. And it's clipped away and set up the center ice to Fedorov trying to get free. Knocked it in over the line. And it's... Not called on the offside. My goodness, I thought it was way offside. And Teddy Nolan knows what has to be done tonight in this hockey game. Now we had an opportunity to talk to Ted Nolan. He was very excited about tonight's game. And here's what he had to say about the Detroit Red Wings. Detroit's a very talented club. Uh, they just made a big trade for uh, uh, another pretty good superstar in the league in Shanahan. So, you know, we, we gotta, we're going to have our hands full. But... Uh, Hopefully tonight the momentum of the opening ceremonies, the enthusiasm of the new rank and the unveiling of new sweaters here and everything. So I think uh, the adrenaline will get us going tonight. And we got to make sure we play a smart, uh, cagey game. And we can't let them have uh, too many chances because they have so many offensive type of guys in our lineup. So we're going to play, hopefully, a strong defensive game. Sabres making an effort to get it out of their own zone. Zitnik trailing around behind the net for Galley on the other side. He whacked at it, didn't get it out. McCarty keeping it in. That's knocked out right in front of the net. They should push it to see the rebound. Oh, my. Got a whip leg on the rebound, too. Sent away to center ice. Well, yet, trying to get it to Groshek. Vernon plays it around behind the goal. That rolls to the corner, but it's forced up ahead by the Sabres defense pusher. 
And she got it again. Didn't get it out. Audette almost stole it away. Jamie Pusher, another try, worked it as far as center. Groshek hammers it to the blue line, hit the linesman, and Pusher starts away by easing it off into the Buffalo zone. That's a cue for his teammates to start changing. Jitnik rolling it around on the glass. Didn't get it out. It's banked back in the corner again. Wings turn to put some pressure on. Rolls around behind the net. Kozlov keeping it in. Came in for the shot. Oh, and that's kicked away. Kozlov's got it again. Trying to feed it out in front. Did! And Hasek got wiped out beside the net. He's still lying on the ice. And now he gets to his feet. He's okay. Well, what Ted Nolan was talking about in that sound bite, the Sabres are not doing. He wanted them to play good defense, wanted them not to give up many scoring chances. And look at this for you. This is Duck Brown with two chances. There's the first save. Watch the left leg of Hasek. He makes another incredible save. And here's another look at Hasek coming up with another dandy, this time on Kozlov. So too many quality scoring chances in the early going and too many quality saves by that guy. Detroit has had six shots on goal here. Buffalo won. Ward trying to steer it out of his own end. Can't do it. Now it's tipped away and that's going to roll down the ice by the Detroit defense. And back after it now Erickson and they'll bring it right back into Buffalo territory. Almost two minutes into the opening period here at the Marine Midland Arena. Uh, Curtis Brown was talking to Curtis this morning and uh, he was telling me how comfortable he feels and he said one of the reasons uh, he said the guys uh, have really accepted him and helped them along and sometimes when a rookie breaks in uh, it takes him a while to become accepted and, and part of the group so to speak but not so with Curtis. McKee will get his opportunity to get it out works it over to Brown Brown flipping it in. Vernon likes to play that puck. He's out after it again. Roll it back into the corner. Brown steals it away. Try to get it in front. And it's chipped just wide of the net. Back in the corner again. They hack at it. Pekka keeping it in. Sabres attempting to hold it in again. Roll back out in front of the net. And the wings will deflect it and knock it down the ice. But it's going to be right on Hashik. He'll give it to Jay McKee. McKee, round on the boards, not out, held in at the point. Larry on off, had it stolen away. It's cleared ahead to center, too far by Pekka from Brown. Detroit breaking it up. Kozlov got squeezed out by Schmelich. Hustling after it now for the wings, banking it back into the corner. It's kept in by Detroit, worked down low by Konstantinov. That's in behind the Buffalo net. They hack away at it. Schmelich couldn't reach it. Konstantinov, the long shot, just going wide of the net. Detroit's trying to put some more pressure on. In behind the goal, Kozlov got it out in front. Knocked away to Pekka. Pekka runs into Konstantinov. Whistled out to Ray at center. Ray tried to get free. He tipped it in over the Red Wing line. One linesman started to wave it off. The other one says, no, sir, it's icing. And we'll have another call coming up against the Buffalo Sabres. 3.09 into this opening period here in Buffalo. No score. We have a wonderful 75 Lac Louis Cabernet. Or an exquisite 58 Le Boussemillon. Or a 62 Je vous Pinot, if you're in the mood for... No, 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 no. Enough of that old stuff. The lady and I would prefer something fresh. How about something in a lager? What do you got in a Budweiser from, say, early this month? Budweiser. Guaranteed fresh with born-on dates. In a time when you can do anything without talking to anyone, a time when you have a number for this and for that, wouldn't it be good to know there are still people to help you? Well, at Independent Health, your coverage includes more than just benefits. It includes people. People who work for us whose only job is to work for you. People who respond to your needs quickly. Because with us, you are not a number, but you will be counted. Independent Health, it's what we do that makes us different. MetLife Limp Snoopy One is cruising the skies above Buffalo. It's powered by twin engines capable of reaching speeds over 57 miles an hour. And Snoopy One can navigate at altitudes in excess of 6,000 feet. Don't bother looking it up. That's over a mile up there. Now a chance. Getting it out to center ice for Buffalo. Daw couldn't catch up with it. Tap back in the other direction. Fedorov trying to get free. Fedorov dances to the line. Ooh, and Wilson just missed him. In the corner, Shannon rolled it around the board. Wilson just hammered Fedorov. And three in the slot area. Set out to center ice. Sabres coming back. Platt reels one in. Vernon 
And the net fires it around on the glass again to the blue line. Shannon keeping it in, bumped by Fedorov, plant the long shot. And Vernon is going to have to hang on to that as Courage was coasting in there, taking a look. See the Buffalo Sabres shake on the Tampa Bay Lightning at this spanking new Marine Midland Arena. It's coming up this Tuesday. Call Fantastics now at 888-4000 or 1-88-223-6000 outside Erie County to reserve your seats. Operators are standing by even as I speak. Now the face off will be to the left of Mike Vernon. I was talking to Donald at depth this morning, uh, asking him about his knee. He said no problems from the road trip. It hadn't swelled up, which is great news. He said, "What the problem I have is with my timing, and obviously my conditioning isn't where it should be. I played in nine months. That's yeah. hardly surprising, huh? And back comes Detroit again, brought in over the line by Johnson, working to the corner, tried to get it out in front and did, and LaFontaine broke it up. But the wings keep it in to Johnson again, screenshot right on. Chipped off the boards to the blue line, brought away to center ice, cross ice pass. Adet had to wait for it. Adet fending off a check. Oh, what a move he makes! Donald Adet cleared it back to the point, went all the way to center ice. Incredible move by Adet as he undressed the defenseman pusher. Chance for Galley to control the puck. Bothered from behind. Works it to the corner. Now, here's the blue line. It's cleared back in again. Another chance for Buffalo. Left Fontaine sailing away to center. In over the Detroit line. Odette fired in front. And Left Fontaine just failed to connect. Held in at the point. That deflected. And it's chipped out to center, but recovered again by Galley. Approaching the five minute mark in a scoreless first period. Here's Audette turning once again. Audette dancing away at center ice in over the Detroit line. The LaFontaine cutting in his board. Didn't get the shot away. Ward taken down in the corner. Buffalo's pusher now trying to get back again. Works it to center to Fedorov. Setting up a two-on-one. In over the line. But Schmelick came back on him very neatly. Deflected to the point. The long shot. He's taken right off. Oh, shakes got that one and hangs on as LaPointe was camped on his doorstep. Not only does Dominic Hasek excel at stopping the puck, but he's so terrific at controlling rebounds. And that was a tough shot to control because it was low in the skates. But watch how Hasek makes certain that this puck doesn't get away from him. Boy, what a great piece of goaltending. LaPointe was just looking for a loose puck or a rebound to poke by the Buffalo goaltender. And Hasek has been brilliant here in the early going. Detroit with eight shots on goal. Buffalo with two. Wings trying to hold it in and do by getting it back to the point. It's whipped right back in again by Ward. And set around to the board. Brown kicks it into the corner. And jam in there. McKee failing to come up with the puck. Goes after it again. Oh, no. It's Hashik helping out. He ripped it around on the glass. Not out. Wings keeping it into Kozlov. Kozlov slipping it around to Iserman. Iserman drops it off to Kozlov once again. Kozlov going to get it in front. That's taken away. Another chance for Buffalo to clear the zone. McKee to center ice. Wings coming right back to Larianov. Larianov sailing it in over the line. A shot by Iserman. That's deflected away. Comes to the blue line. And finally out to center by Ward. Ward got it ahead. And in over the line now. It's cleared behind the net as Brown chased after the puck. Held in by Pekka momentarily. It ends up rolling back to center ice. A chance now for Iserman in over the line. Iserman drags it through the defense. Oh, great play by Shannon. Sent back to center ice. Buffalo coming right back again. Drop pass. Pekka. Quicken shot. Ripped it wide of the net. Here's Ward. Down behind him. He tried to get it out in front. Broke it up. And now the wing sending it to center again, but taken away by Shannon. He'll gulp it right back in. Both teams are changing. Get the head to the blue line. Deflected and knocked down right on the line. Now cleared back through the middle. Buffalo to cover up once again. Shannon fired it up. And it's knocked by Ray as he muscled it as far as the line. No farther. Holzinger back to Shannon again. Shannon gaining center ice to Ray who got checked. Taken away by the wings to the Buffalo line. And the shot gets knocked down. Freddy gets taken out in the corner. He loses his hat. And then they poke at it again in along the wall. Kick free behind the net. Buffalo recovering. Pass ahead, off the leg, and out to center ice. Pusher couldn't pick it up in his skates. Ray unable to get it. Left back there by Primo for Shannon. Working it to Holzinger. Holzinger fired that one on the backhand right into the Red Wing bench, and the lumber comes up right near center ice. Vicks Deep Discount Stretches. We're brought to you by the Vicks Deep Discount people tonight. For the Red Wings, Fatisa, Airy, and Mulphy all out of the lineup. Yeah, 
Fatisov uh, still trying to come back from a knee injury. Bob Airy and Maltby healthy scratches. And of course for Buffalo, Brad May continues his rehabilitation with his shoulder. Bob Bugner has a fractured bone in his foot and Semenov is a healthy scratch. One of the things that the Buffalo coaches were telling me this morning that they wanted to make sure that when they were at that Detroit blue line or in that neutral zone that the puck went in deep because the Red Wings have one of the great transition games in the NHL. Handled back there by Zitnik. He'll try and work it out of there. Set to center ice at the flex down the ice off Plant stick. Plant racing after it again, tangled up with Rose. Pusher. It's tied up by Burridge. Plant trying it free on his knees, goes after it again. Here's Burridge fighting with Pusher in along the boards. They still jam away in the corner as the lumber comes up momentarily. Held in by Buffalo. Now finally kicked free and the wings. Get an opportunity to send it through center and down the ice. Shipnik back to take out his check along the boards. That's Martin LaPoint. Came in front of the net. But it's recovered by Burridge. He swings it up to Shipnik looking for skating room as he cuts back through the middle again. Works it in over the line along with Daw. Tipping it down low. Burridge got punched in the corner. Now they work it to the blue line and it's fired out through center ice. Sabres are changing. Schmelik turning. Schmelik will launch one right back in again. That allows the rest of his team to make a switch. Lipstrom batted around on the boards. Red Wings can't get it out. Kept in by Buffalo. Fired across ice. Baudette fighting for it in the corner. Unable to come up with the puck. Lidstrom starts back. He steers it to Johnson. Johnson in over the line. Dumped it around behind the net. Hashik helped his cause by working it on the boards, but it's kept in there by Taylor. Well, they jam in along the wall again. Comes free. The Red Wings trying to put some pressure on beside the net. McKay takes out his man, and it's picked off by Groshek. Groshek looking for room to get out of his own end. Gets to center ice for Schmelik. He can't get any farther, and it's taken back now by Buffalo's LaFontaine. Leaving it to Groshek. Could not pick up the pass. The Wings will dump it in by Taylor and head off for another change. Schmelik in the corner with a tad over 11 minutes remaining in the opening period. Schmelik fired it up the middle. That one's picked off. Come right back again for the Wings. Iserman dances in over the line. Took his shot. Hashik makes the save. Schmelik starting away. He finds Brown. Brown leaving it there. Weber's trying to work it out now. The pass up on the wing. Too far for Pekka. Couldn't catch up with it. Banked off the boards, off Brown, and it bubbles its way back inside the Buffalo line. Wilson swinging it across. That one misses everybody, goes down the ice, a race for it. Pekka after it, so is Brown. Sabres get there first. Pekka working it free in front of Brown, couldn't get his shot off. Brown tracks it down in the corner again. Gross rubs him up. Held in by Buffalo, swung back behind the net. Here's Pekka. He drops it back behind the net again. Brown got it out in front. Holzinger like couldn't get the shot of backhand. They walk at it in front of the net. That's tipped away. And the wings, Kozlov starting back. Kozlov coming away to center now. He leaves it there to Larionov. He dropped it off. Back to Kozlov in front. Didn't get a shot away. Took another whack at it. Hit. Rotten by Wilson. Sabres recovering. Over to Shannon. Shannon tips it off the board, sending it to center ice. Lidstrom recovering for the wings. Just past the halfway mark of this opening period. Detroit bringing it back in over the line again. It's golf right on. That's cleared away. Picked up by Ray. Ray can't get it out of his own end. Kept in there by Brown in the corner. Now it dribbles its way inside Detroit territory. Olsinger trying to catch up with it, unable to do so, and it's fired away and sent all the way down the ice by Darren McCarty. Galley catches up with it just in time for the linesman to signal an icing call. 9.27 remaining here in this opening period. Still looking for our first goal of the game. For Caravan, we invented new ways to stash your stuff. Now we're building more bins and boxes and a great new place to put them. The new Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. We packed our full-size Ram with Magnum Power. Now we're reloading. The new Magnum Power Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. When he can, Tom Licata likes to get away from the stresses of everyday life. 
Fortunately, he's an M&T Bank customer. Because with supermarket branches open seven days a week, telephone banking, and access to thousands of ATMs, M&T has made things a lot more convenient for Tom. In fact, right now, he's paying his bills with M&T's online banking service, which always comes in handy when you're really busy. M&T, all the bank you'll ever need. We've just eclipsed the halfway mark of the opening period of the opening regular season game in the beautiful Marine Midland Arena. Still looking for a first goal. Galley whipped one in wide of the net. Chopped into the corner, and the wings will recover now. Draper taps it up on the wing. Out to center ice. Draper carries on. Draper in over the line. Trying to flip it in front of the net. That one misses. Audet can't come up with the puck. Kept in by Detroit's McCarty. Not free, but held in again by Draper. Got it around again behind the net. McCarty's camped out in front. Didn't get the puck. Came to the blue line. Pusher kept it in. That's knocked down. Finally whipped out to center ice. Groshek. This will tap it in. Vernon handles that and swings it away from LaFontaine. McCarty's got it behind the net. Audette tried to catch up with it. Bumps back there with Routes. Here to head. Brown failed to get it out. Now they jam at it again. Reflex in front. But the wings recovered. Galley takes it away. And Galley gave it away to Brown. Up it comes to Fedorov by himself. His teammates are changing Fedorov in over the line. Trying to get around Galley, and then he gave it away right in front of the net. Picked off by Daw, who slips it out to center. Wings with Erickson. Rolling around at his own end. Try to dump it up ahead again. Got it to center ice. It's jammed in around behind the Buffalo net. Hashik handling it back there. Try to flip it ahead for Daw. Didn't get it that far. Then Daw got tangled up with his check. They jam in along the boards. LaPointe attempting to fish it free, but too late. The whistle is gone. Exactly eight minutes remaining here in the opening period. First and sideline, line, what's the problem? Man, my party is lame. I think I got some skunky beer. Sir, relax. When was your beer born? Born? What are you talking about? It doesn't have a born on date? A what? Do you have any Budweiser? No, man, you gotta help me. Okay, remain calm, sir. We're on our way. New Born on Dating from Budweiser, because fresh beer tastes better. Go, 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 go. Sir, put down the skunky beer and slowly back away. What if I get a frog in my throat? What if I can't see the writing on the wall? What if she didn't have to pay for doctor visits? What if I can see any doctor I want? Introducing the new Community Blue Advantage, the plan you can make your own. What if I didn't have to worry about the quality of my health coverage? What if I had more flexibility? More choices! What if we could get exactly, exactly what, what we want? want? The new Community Blue Advantage. Ask your employer today. Thanks very much. I'm in the Sabres alumni box, and I'm joined by Tony McKegney. What do you think of this building? Oh, it's fantastic. It's, uh, this really is opening night, and uh, tremendous tribute to Seymour Knox. I thought the uh, opening ceremonies were just fantastic tonight. Not a bad seat either. Back upstairs to Rick and Jim. Ready for the faceoff now as Burridge swings it around on the boards. Got it to the blue line. Not out. And a long shot is held in there as Shanahan let it go. Hook back into the corner. Hatchet took it away from Fedorov. He tried to hack at the puck. Recovered by Burridge. Didn't get it out. Finally slips off the board, but not out again. Wings keeping it into the point. I jam it out in front, but Hashik said, oh, no, you don't. And he was wise to the move of the newest wing, Brendan Shanahan. Now, Brendan Shanahan is one of the better goal scorers in the NHL. And I was talking to Dominic Hashik this morning about defending against Shanahan. And Dominic said the one thing that he likes to do is get himself in the open, and he always one-times the puck. And I says, well, what does this mean for you then? He said, well, he says, I have to know where he is at all times when he's on the ice. But Shanahan, of course, is expected to bring that physical presence to a Detroit lineup that was really lacking in that department, in, particularly in the last year or two. One thing, Buffalo must start moving the puck quicker. You can see the difference between the wings and the Sabres by the way the puck moves. Long shot from the point by Konstantinov gets knocked down. Iserman keeping it in to Konstantinov. He goes to the corner, and Shannon takes it away, working it up on the wing. Pekka, difficulty controlling it. Now trying to whip it through the middle, but he hits Shannon right in the rear end. Brought back in again by Konstantinov. He got pushed! Cleared off the boards to the blue line. And finally away to center by Wilson. Wilson trying to muscle it through center. He's got tangled. Oh, he got hammered from behind by Kozlov. 
Look in at center ice. Sabres trying to work it free, and Pekka finally dies. That's steered back to the corner. Konstantinov has been on the losing end of a couple of Buffalo checks, and now he runs into Pekka and lays the lumber on him. Go back in the corner. Primo trying to keep it in there. And jam on the Primo. has got the puck. Trying to feed it out in front. But it's knocked around behind the net. Sabres holding it in again. Keeping it back in to Primo once more. Primo rolls it to the corner. Jammed around to Holzinger. Holzinger tried to work it in front. Couldn't do it. Taken away on the boards. Kozlov doesn't get it out as Wilson pinches in. And took it into the corner. Finally fired around to the boards. And this one will get out and go down the ice. But no icing. Both teams taking advantage. Trying to make a change. Up to Ray at center. Ray whipped it back through the middle again. Holzinger. Couldn't get anywhere. Shannon will drill one in, and he'll step off the ice. Left behind the net by Burton. Ray went in there and stepped into his check and went down. Now it's cleared out to center. Red Wings coming back. Three on two. Brought in over the line. A chance for Dandino. Cleared right in front of the net. And Dandino couldn't pick up the return pass. Taken away by Galley. Galley swings it up at center. And away goes LaFontaine in over the line. Offside is the call. Now that was a terrific play by Pusher at the blue line as LaFontaine had a three-on-two break going. LaFontaine attempted to gain the blue line but could not do it. An excellent stand-up play by the defenseman. And plays like that, of course, do not show up in the scorecard at the end of the game, but they are key defensive plays. Pat LaFontaine uh, playing with Donald Adet and Mike Groshek. The Sabres have not been able to generate much offense in this opening period. Just four shots on goal to Detroit's 11. Pusher got it as far as center. Fedorov tapped it in over the line. It slips off into the corner. Moves it around behind the net. Came to Fedorov. And he drilled it wide on the short side. Now they tap it back in behind the goal again. The wings keeping it in there with Shanahan helping out. Shanahan after it again. Shanahan, Fedorov, there's the shot. Hashik had to be quick on that one. Detroit really putting on the pressure now. Another long shot. Hashik grabs a hold and hangs on. And there's Shanahan hanging around once again. Game day items. Authentic Buffalo Sabres CCM jerseys. Both pro weight and replica available. Starting at $70. Adult and youth sizes available. Sabres merchandise. You can order now by calling... 855-4140 or if you're outside the Buffalo area 1-888-GO-SABER Had a long chat this morning with head coach Scotty Bowman uh, his club uh, just one win two losses and they've only scored four goals and Scotty says I'm not at all concerned about the goals for our goals against we've only given up five and he says that's the main thing the goals will come well, he's certainly got the potential for it in the lineup. Doesn't early. he, though? Wow, he's trying to kick it ahead. Groshek after it now. Groshek will wheel it right back in, but that one is knocked down and handled by the wings. Erickson got it to center ice. Johnson coming in over the line. Johnson didn't get a shot away as McKee got in front of him. Interrupt him up a bit in the quarter. And jam around him along the boards again. Squirt free to an open lane. Schmelick catching up with it. Schmelich's pass, knocked down at the blue line, came out, knocked back in again. Intentional offside against the Detroit Red Wings as you take a look from another shot from the MetLife flip. Snoopy one looking down on Buffalo. For Caravan, we invented new ways to stash your stuff. Now we're building more bins and boxes and a great new place to put them. The new Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. We packed our full-size Ram with Magnum power. Now we're reloading. The new Magnum powered Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. I'm Barbara March, and I'm the latest Win for Life winner. And I love New York. A thousand a week. That's 21 Broadway shows a week. 43 carriage rides and a lot of hot dogs. You keep living, we'll keep paying. The weekend spills, the weekend thrills. NASCAR's top guns are telling Eli all about it. Hang on, because this weekend NASCAR is coming at you. Ready for the face-off to come up in Detroit territory. Less than five to go in a scoreless first period. 
Fontaine out on the ace again for Buffalo with Audet and Groce. Matt Fontaine winning the draw. Schmelich shot. That deflects and goes popping right out of play. Going to do it again. That one doesn't even get on net. 13 to 4. Detroit out shooting Buffalo. Pat LaFontaine was telling me on faceoffs in the zones, although this one's going to be inside the blue line. And I'll get to that point when we face off uh, at the circles to the right or left of the goaltender. Up down at the line, and Schmelik was taken down. No penalty. Had a chance for the wings. Heiserman leaves it there. Play right on. Hashik will hang on to that one, and bodies are flying everywhere. And let's go back down again to Dennis Williams. Thanks very much, guys. Coming up in the first intermission, an interview with NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman. We'll have more on Seymour Knox the third. And of course, those two sharp-dressed guys will give us their first period analysis. Let's go back upstairs. Rick and Jim. Wait, was he talking about us? Sharp-dressed? I guess I, so. I, I, yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, the face-off to the right of Dominic Hasek in most of the period, the puck has been in the Buffalo zone. This line of Larry Onoff, uh, center between Steve Eiserman and Kozlov. I was watching them this morning throw the puck around and their hands are so soft that you <laughs> don't even hear the puck when it hits the stick. I get a chance to show that off right now. Through in front! Kozlov one timer scores! Boy, no sooner do you say it than they prove it and Detroit has a one nothing lead. Unstoppable shot, but what a great play by Larry Onoff, one of the real masters of the hockey, of the game of hockey, finding Kozlov in the perfect position off the faceoff. And watch what happens. Here's Kozlov, drifts right inside the top of the circle and just guns it by Dominic Hasek. You can't stop a shot like that. A beautifully conceived play by Detroit, one nothing. The wings connecting on their 15th shot on goal in this game. Now it's Set away to center ice again. Kozlov tipped it, knocked down at center. Sabres try to come back. Finally, Shannon going into the zone. Vernon lost it behind the net. Tried to jam it out in front. A screen, he's thrown, and he slides it right across the goal crease. Hook behind the goal again. Brown couldn't catch up with it. Wings to recover. Tap to head to center to Lariano. Brown back after the puck now, leaving it to Wilson. Wilson steps away. Got it to Shannon. Cross ice pass. Look through the line, intercepted by Kozlov. Took the long shot and fired that one nowhere near the goal. Shannon cranking it over the other side. Wilson tipped it to the blue line, out to center. Got it back again, lost it, then got it again. Set to center right. The wings recover again before Holzinger could get there. Federoff in over the line. Federoff flipping one, that's right on. Hasek has to lunge to cover up on that one and hang on to it as Ray and Federoff have a little chat out near the blue line. Well, Detroit in the lead by one to nothing, and it's always the centerman's job. And this is Pat LaFontaine as he faces off with Larry Onoff. It's LaFontaine's job to tie up the centerman. Now the referee gets involved in this. The puck goes off his stick. Well, watch what Larry Onoff does. We can stop it right there. This guy right here is Kozlov. As he drifts into the perfect position, and look at this pass. Well, you can't do it any better. And as a result of that, the wings have the lead. And the shot is right on. Hashik has to reach out and handle that one as Shanahan let her rip. I would think if I were Ted Nolan at this particular point of this period, as we look at the goal scorer, Kozlov, his second of the season, if I were Ted Nolan, I'd be doing a slow burn right now. His hockey club has not touched anyone, hasn't body checked a soul. And I think that he's going to have plenty to say during the first intermission. There's a chance now for Zipnik to work at the center. It does, and then runs better off. They poke out it in front of the Buffalo bench. Here they're picking away at the puck. LaPoint gets involved. Platt tried to dig it free, and it finally ends up as far as center to Shanahan. He'll jam it right back in. Less than three minutes remaining in the period. Wings with another opportunity. Running around behind the net. Left there to Shanahan again. Shanahan right out in front. Get a jam it in. On the short side. And Hasek makes the save on LaPoint. Hasek. 
Kasich's got to get some help, though. Long shot going wide. Hit the round on the boards, and Daw got it to center ice. Recovered by the wings, Ward. He feeds it ahead, the quick changing. Schmelich for Galley. Galley tipping it to Daw. Daw eluding a check, but still gets knocked down as he clears it in. And he heads to the bench. Fritz Brown clearing it to center. Not in over the line, a chance for Clifford. Trying to go wide in the corner, McKee come out. And behind the net, Detroit keeping the pressure on him in front again. They jam it behind the goal. McCarty knocked down by McKee. McKee still trying to come up with the puck, but he's all tangled up with Darren McCarty back there. Well, the Detroit Red Wings are not a big, aggressive, physical hockey club. And Dominic Hatchick has been under pressure since the moment they dropped the puck to begin this hockey game. Watch this play. Watch what Shanahan does. Or this is just the play behind the net, I beg your pardon, where Hatchick falls on it. But the Sabres have to start hitting people. Detroit have small forwards for the most part. They're quick, but they're not aggressive. Long shot from the point goes wide. Rouse letting it go and recovered by Adet. He'll clear it to Schmelich. Schmelich stepping to center, whipping one in. Zerman out of the net to help his cause. Around on the boards. Adet keeping it in. He took a bump from McCarty. Moving up to Schmelich. Schmelich rolling back into the corner. Leaves it there. Comes back to the point. And that shot. Hill just goes wide. Is that Fontaine knocked off stride? Recovered and fired by Draper. It ends up at center ice on the stick of Richard Schmelich with 120 left in the period. Schmelich in over the line to Audet. Audet tried to beat it in front. Can't do it. Taken away by Rouse. He got it around on the other side. Dandino starting out. He gets checked. Left it there. Pusher eluded the check and fired it up along the boards. Savers to McKee. He whipping it back to Schmelich again. He taps it inside the Detroit zone. The Red Wings to bring it back out. Buffalo puck changing. And over the line, Johnson left it there. That's broken up. Kick free and worked up ahead to center ice. Brown failed to get away. Brown being chased around with 45 seconds remaining in the period. To Pekka again. Pekka ripped it into the corner. Here's Ward trying to track it down. Put behind the net. Kept in there by Brown. Brown locked up in his skates. Going after it again. Pekka helps out. Pekka got it in front of shot went on. And Vernon will cover up and hang on to it before Curtis Brown can grab the rebound. Now Dixon Ward is a good goal scorer, scored 22 goals in his first season in the NHL. That was the Vancouver Canucks. Last year, Ward led the Rochester Americans in scoring and also led them in playoff scoring as he set a record for most points. That time was a good save by the goaltender Vernon who has had not much action down at his end of the rink. There is but one half minute remaining in this, the opening period. And considering the shots are 19 to 5, and many of those 19 were quality scoring opportunities. It's fortunate for Buffalo, the score is 1-0 only. Shannon took a shot right on and Vernon get some help there in covering up. So a good opportunity and good things happen when you win faceoffs. That's right. And LaFontaine was going to make this point. He was saying with the new faceoff uh, alignments this year, you see the L shapes on the ice by the faceoff dot. Pat said he normally would like to take the draw on his forehand, but he said because of the way you have to line up, he said he feels much comfortable, much more comfortable taking it on his backhand. You have to stay square. See how square the two players are? And LaFontaine not only won the draw, but got himself to the front of the net on that most recent play. Kept in to Shannon again. Oh, it's almost intercepted as he tried to get it to Wilson on an ill-advised pass. Shannon fires that one. It's tipped high. Look out. And over the glass and up into the crowd. And that was a very poor play by Daryl Shannon. And LaFontaine won the draw perfectly. Got to the, or waited until his teammates got to the front of the net and then Shannon could not get the shot through. And that nothing that disturbs a, a forward more than that when you make a good play and then the defenseman just doesn't do the right thing. And that's one thing when you're playing a team like Detroit, boy, you cannot afford to make too many bad plays. They're just too good. Yeah. <laughs> 
Kozlov doing a little wood chopping over the other side of the ice. On the Burridge. They still haven't dropped it. Now they do. It'll be tapped into the corner. And the wings will recover. Platt could not catch up with it. Kozlov got rid of it to center ice. And as Smellick picks it up and whips it back in, that's going to do it for the opening period. Here at the Marine Midland Arena, Burridge went sailing in there but was unable to come up with the puck as the horn goes. Detroit has the lead 1-0 as the teams leave the ice for the first period. The Buffalo Sabres battle it out on Empire Sports Network and the Labatt Hockey Hotline follows it all. Join host Brian Blessing and Mike Robitaille as they bring you all the scores, highlights, and questions from the fans live on the Labatt Hockey Hotline. Looking for the best? Then this could be the best news of the year because you've never seen a better deal than $2,000 cash back on a new 96 Ford Taurus. For a limited time, your participating Ford dealers are offering $2,000 back when you buy or red carpet lease a 96 Taurus, which makes right now the best time for you to get one. So hurry to your participating local Ford dealer today. It's not surprising that with their children out of diapers, the Malones are preparing for the day their kids go to college. And it's not surprising that in their 20th year of marriage, the Colemans are planning for retirement. Nor is it surprising that with the birth of their third grandchild, the Morrises are thinking of ways to help provide for them. What may be surprising, however, is that all of these people found the help they needed at the same place where they bank. M&T, all the bank you'll ever need. Here we go, folks. Go Bills, for we are here to cheer for you. Go Bills, we are your fans of truth. It's the Marv Levy Show with Paul McGuire, Mondays at 8 on Empire Sports Network. Welcome back to Buffalo Sabres Hockey, where the score after one period of play, Detroit leads Buffalo by a score of one to nothing. I'm joined now by NHL Commissioner Gary Bedman. Gary, it's great to have you with us. And uh, this whole night is involved around uh, Seymour Knox, and you knew him pretty well. Um, what are your memories of Seymour? Well, Seymour, uh, in addition to being probably the nicest person I've ever met, and I think anybody who's ever met that says, says the same thing. Uh, as one of the senior members uh, of, of the governors, he was somebody who was always of good counsel to me. He was a member of the executive committee. I don't think a week went by that we didn't speak. Uh, and he's been missed and will continue to be missed. How special is this night for the National Hockey League? Well, it's, it's a special night. This is a great building uh, for the league. It's a great building for Buffalo. Uh, nice to have full-size ice. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it's a great night. And actually, it was a pretty emotional night in terms of the touch of raising the banner uh, in Seymour's memory. Uh, and uh, if they uh, score a few more goals, maybe it'll even be more exciting for the Sabres fans. Gary, we've seen a lot of teams leave some small markets, but Seymour's vision and some other people have helped keep the Buffalo Sabres here in Buffalo. Could you talk a little bit about that and how important that is for the National Hockey League? Well, the, the commitment of ownership to a market is probably more important than any other factor. Uh, when you look at what happened in Quebec City and in Winnipeg, there's really one reason in each of those cases that there's no longer a franchise there. It wasn't because we were trying to move them. It's because nobody was prepared any longer to own a franchise there. We stayed in Winnipeg for an extra year trying to find somebody to own the franchise in Winnipeg, and nobody would do it. It's the same reason that the Oilers are still in Edmonton. Peter Pocklington has a reputation that goes both ways, but his commitment uh, to Edmonton has never been doubted. In this, in this market, uh, uh, the Knox's reputation is a little different than Peter's in Edmonton, but the fact is they have the commitment to this city. That family is the reason that there's a building here and that the reason that the Sabres are here. You've seen a lot of the new buildings around the NHL. How does this one stack up? It's a great building. I mean, everyone's a little different. Everyone is, is tailored to the market. I think this is a spectacular building. When you see the atrium lit up downtown, uh, I just think it's, it's wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of the game. My pleasure. Thanks very much. All right, Buffalo Sabres hockey continues where the score after one period of play, Detroit leads the Sabres one to nothing. The 
joints always jumping. Friday, October 18th, Marine Midland Arena, Buffalo. One night only. Come see the sizzle as the Toronto Raptors take on Alonzo Mourning and the Miami Heat in the Molson preseason shootout. Catch Damon Sotomayor, Marcus Canby, and all the Toronto Raptors entertainment. Tickets start at just $15 at the box office or by calling 716-888-4000 or 888-223-6000 now. Because the joint's always jumping. And now, from Paris. From Milan. From St. Louis. Introducing a new look from Budweiser. Born on dating. It's the day your bud was born. Because fresh beer tastes better. Nice label. Thanks. What if I can't see the writing on the wall? What if she didn't have to pay for doctor visits? What if I can see any doctor I want? Introducing the new Community Blue Advantage, the plan you can make your own. What if I didn't have to worry about the quality of my health coverage? What if I had more flexibility? More choices! What if we could get exactly, exactly what, what we want? want? The new Community Blue Advantage. Ask your employer today. For Caravan, we invented new ways to stash your stuff. Now we're building more bins and boxes, and a great new place to put them. The new Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. We packed our full-size Ram with Magnum Power. Now we're reloading. The new Magnum Power Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. Welcome back to Buffalo Sabres Hockey. The score after one period, Detroit one, Buffalo nothing. Well, it, there's no question, this is a very, very special night. It's a tribute to Seymour Knox, and here is a feature done last year on Seymour and Nordy Knox. My brother Nordy and I are by no means known as gamblers. However, in 1970, we gambled that Buffalo would be a great place for National Hockey League franchise. And we won that gamble. In 1969, Seymour and Northrop Knox rolled the dice on the NHL and came up winners. Western New York and the Niagara Frontier would finally have Major League Hockey. And the Knox brothers were the proud parents of the newest expansion franchise, the Buffalo Sabres. Perseverance is a perfect word because they really stuck to their guns. They were offered uh, to go to St. Louis uh, and uh, to Cleveland and a couple of other places, but the Knoxes didn't want that. They wanted a franchise here in Buffalo. From the start, the Knox brothers approached their newest endeavor differently than most. While many owners kept their distance from their teams and the communities they belonged to, the Knox brothers welcomed the Sabres in western New York as members of an extended family. And it was the players who felt the effects firsthand. They welcomed the families. They made it a whole group, not just the hockey players. They wanted to feel uh, that they were part of the, the, the wife and the kids and especially when we had the Christmas parties and the, the get-together like that. They were not outsiders. They weren't the boss. They were the part of the whole group, and maybe that's why we won so many good games in Buffalo. The most important thing I remember is uh, my first training camp. I was off to a very good start, and uh, Seymour and Nody both made the trip to our training camp site in St. Catharines to meet me personally, and I really felt like I was coming into a family situation. I can remember it as vivid as any, of me any memory, memory I have of this, this hockey club. And Seymour and Nordy walk into the dressing room saying hi to the players and, and you know, kibitzing a little bit and shaking hands. Um, and that happened all the time, you know, and then still does. They, they still go into the dressing room and say hi to the guys. And they just love the sport of hockey. 26 years after the dream began, Seymour and Nordy continue their quest for the Stanley Cup. Their commitment to excellence is evidenced by the list of names that have been tapped to help the Sabres reach for hockey's highest point. Along the way, they've given Western New York and the Southern Tier some great memories. Cups 
it off the boards in the corner. Robert going after it. He Up obviously is the quest of everybody in the National Hockey League. Uh, that's supposedly a, the pinnacle of accomplishment to do that. But that isn't necessarily true. I think the pinnacle of accomplishment here is the fact that this franchise has been sustained and is being sustained for the number of years that it has been. It's a solid franchise. The, the Knoxes have brought a stability to it. Their end is sure to win the Stanley Cup, certainly for the fans and for the players who have played here. Yeah, that's, that's a goal. But a bigger goal is, is the pride of the community. And uh, the Knoxes have a lot of pride in, in this community. Uh, maybe some people outside of the community don't understand that. But it's very important to the people here to have that and to believe in that. Gentlemen, congratulations, and uh, it's just super what you've done for the Buffalo area. We're all so very proud of the Sabres. Well, we had great support, Rick, from everybody in, on the fans from the Niagara Frontier here in Buffalo, and we thank them for the great support. Without it, we wouldn't be here. What is Pro Shop Buffalo Hardwood? They're do-it-yourself hardwood floors and floor care products. Western New York's largest and best place for original Pergo laminate floors. The largest selection of Carhartt rugged wear. We'll show you how. Tonight, the MetLife Blimp Snoopy One has teamed up with the Buffalo Sabres to provide an aerial view of the beautiful Marine Midland Arena. MetLife Blimp does not require a home base. It's constantly on the road and logs over 60,000 miles a year. One to nothing, the Detroit Red Wings in the lead inside the Marine Midland Arena. Now, yeah, ah, there's not too much about it, or doubt about it, uh, who had the edge in that first period, wow. I think the, uh, the Detroit Red Wings were the better team by uh, a large margin, a very poor opening 20 minutes by Buffalo, without question. Uh, without making excuses, could they have been a little tight? Well, I, I think so, uh, they certainly, uh, looked, they certainly looked that way, but gee, gee whiz, you can't allow Detroit to, uh, total control of the play, <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. Uh, did we want to go to the goal by Kozlov. Uh, and this was a really a terrific play by Larry Onoff off a faceoff. I said initially it was uh, Pat LaFontaine who took the draw, but actually it's Mike Pekka. And uh, here's Pekka and uh, Larry Onoff facing off. And what happens is the Sabres get, uh, actually control the draw, the draw for a moment. 
And if uh, Larry Onoff is going to come in and strip the puck from Pekka, if we can stop it, uh, just let it go a little bit further and stop it right here. And you can see where the Sabres are looking. All Everybody's watching the puck, and nobody is watching this guy in front, and that's Kozlov. And he gets himself into perfect position, and the perfect pass comes from Larry Onoff. And Kozlov just uh, beats Dominic Hasek a one-timer. I guess the only consolation for the Sabres is that they allowed only one goal. Well, indeed. And we'll see if in just a moment whether they can get the equalizer here in the second period of this hockey game at the Marine Midland Arena with Detroit in front, but only by one. <laughs> you'll never get over just landed at your Pontiac dealer the new 1997 wide track Grand Prix from Pontiac see how wider is better at your Pontiac dealers of Western New York Everybody, I'm Jim Brunson. I'm Howard Simon. And if you missed Band TV this past week, you missed Todd Collins, Marcel Dion, Hank Goldberg, and Larry Carrier. On Monday, a complete breakdown of the Bills Dolphins game. Plus, the NBA week starts. Raptors Heat come to town. We'll talk to Isaiah Thomas, Pat Riley, Alonzo Mourning, and Marcus Camby. And we'll be all over Big Four College basketball, John Feline and Jack Armstrong in studio. Band TV, your voice, your choice. by your local Chevrolet Geo dealers. Cars you can trust from people you can depend on. By Pepsi. Nothing else is a Pepsi. By Buffalo Hardwood, your Carhartt rugged wear outlet. And by Topps Friendly Markets. Topps never stop saving you more. We are ready to roll with the second period here at the Marine Midland Arena. Wilson at his own line, tapping one through center ice. The wings break it up, but Plant steals it back again. Swings it around behind the net. Burry's trying to catch up. Vernon will help it on the board. Plant got hooked away from the play, but managed to keep it in there. And they all pile into the corner now. Fedorov keeping an eye on Plant. Burry's trying to move it free again as he does some bumping with Lidstrom. Now it goes behind the net chance for Konstantinov to get it out. And it's finally tapped through the neutral area. Eric Plant covering up for Buffalo. Away from Shanahan, but gave it away to the point. Dropped it back, the shot went on. Hasek to save. That's rolled around behind the net. Kept in there by Konstantinov. It came right out in front again. Finally knocked free, and it's whipped out to center by Daw. Wings making a change. Back at center ice for Buffalo now. Flipped in over the line by Daw. Goes after it once again. Can't come up with it. Neither can Plant. Wilson runs into the point to keep it in there. Shovel to the line. Not out. Plant holding it in. Got it back into the corner. Burridge there quickly. Burridge swinging around to the boards. Trying to jam it back in. The Sabres have to complete a chain. Fedorov just whipped it around the boards and down the ice. And there'll be no icing. Hasek sensing that. Tees it up for his defenseman Zitnik. Lafontaine will leave it to Galley. Galley stepping away to center, up for Lafontaine, too far, it goes right to Vernon, and Vernon looks up and sees that C on a Buffalo uniform coming, and he likes to hang on to it. The Discover card, scoring summary, it pays to Discover, that was the only goal in the first period, Larionov setting up Kozlov, and boy, one-timer, he just ripped it into that end. Fontaine staying out there now for Buffalo. And he'll take the draw against Lariano. And not quite two minutes into the second period. 
Gross in the corner. Gave it away to Audette. Tried to get it in front. The jam at it again. Made it for Groshek. A shot. And Vernon kicked it away. Held in to left Fontaine. Trying to get it to Audette. Around to Groshek. Groshek kicking at the puck. He got checked. Kelly boots at it. But now it's stroking it up and taken away to center ice. The wing's coming back again. In over the line. Kozlov. And it's deflected off the leg. Goes to the corner. Groshek. Tried to wrap it around to the boards. Gets another try. And fights off Kozlov to give it to Galley. Galley didn't get it out, however. Or get take a bump from Lariana. And still kick it free. And it goes to Zitnik. Zitnik coming back. He wants to go. In over the Detroit line. He tried to leave it there. But Pusher covers up. And Pusher to center ice. A breakaway. Here comes Eisenman. In over the line. Eisenman scores. As Hashik gambled and lost. Hashik came out to try and check Steve Iserman, but got caught that time. And Iserman danced around him and tapped it into a wide open net to play for the 2 0 lead. What a great play by Pusher in the zone. Look at this pass up the middle. The Buffalo defense is caught. Here comes Hashik, and Iserman sees him. And Hashik threw a stick at him, and Stevie Wonder puts it into the open net. As Hasek's blocker also followed the stick. And Detroit go up 2 to nothing, And that play was made from the defenseman pusher up to Lurianov. And then completed by Iserman. Boy, Detroit is so great with their passing and breakout plays. Well, the puck cleared in as Pekka stepped into his man. Poked around on the boards. Not out. Sabres trying to hold it in. Finally jammed free. And then Draper just fired it down the ice. Hashik handling that back there. Shovels it around on the boards for McKee. He whipped it back in. Smellick let it go behind the net. Wings come up with it again, though. Point leaving it there to Draper. Draper drops it back to the point. That's rolled into the corner. Pekka couldn't get it. And behind the net. Came right out in front. Reflects to the blue line. Finally recovered. Ward with a pass that misses everybody in the center. And will be tapped right back in again by Erickson, but called on. We'll have a face-off coming up. The Red Wings got one in the first and one here early in the second. so long you almost get to thinking it's never gonna happen and then one night we get this call Haley would be here in a little over a week oh. we had so much to do oh. I mean we had uh, we had the nursery we had plane yeah. tickets uh, lawyers anyway suddenly we find ourselves at the airport she was just so oh. so beautiful I'm as far back as you can get in this arena, section 302 with Robert Rinaldi from Hamburg. How's the view up here? You can see fine from everywhere. It's great. It's absolutely fantastic. Every seat in the house is great. Rick and Jim, I'm actually going to throw it down to you. <laughs> There's a shot knocked down at the defense by Schmelich, but he is unable to get it out. Wings keeping it in again. Better off trying to jam it in. And it's taken away, and Daw comes back for Buffalo with courage. Daw in over the line. Third one, and then almost... Got up in that top row, way up in the Marine Midland Arena. Well, Jason Daw has changed his number to number 17 from 43. And I asked Jason this morning, why did you do that? And he says, I hate 43. Pretty good, that's a pretty good reason. <laughs> he said, actually, I wanted to wear number 22, but Charlie Huddy is still in the organization. And if he were to be called up, I'd have to surrender that. So I settled for 17. He said, I just hate 43. <laughs> Why did he take it to be good with? I don't know. Sabres trying to keep it in on the faceoff. Do knocked down. Held in by Schmelick. There's a shot. Oh, that one deflected and went off the glass. Shanahan away to center. Shanahan in over the line. He ripped one nowhere near the net. But the wings will hold it in again. Fedorov tapping it back along the boards. Came in front. Shanahan bothered by Plant. They go to the corner together and get tangled up in there. Schmelick 
Waiting for a loose puck to come free as they still kick at it along the board. Shanahan comes up with it. He ducked it behind the net. It stepped out in front and taken away by Daw. Daw starting back with Burridge. Smellick trying to come up on the play. Smellick in over the line. Trying to get it up in front. And it's cleared away in the corner as Smellick was taken out by Lidstrom. Back come the wings again in over the line. Fedorov's shot doesn't get through. The wings will do some changing. Sabres will when they get the opportunity. We're upside right at the Buffalo blue line. Four and a half minutes into this opening period. Buffalo Sabres Circus Night is coming up on the 26th of this month. Come and watch the Sabres take on the Hartford Whalers and see the Ringling Brothers Clowns. And you can also win tickets to the greatest show on earth and other prizes. Fun for the whole family. Now Buffalo down 2-0 and I suggest that they ought to score the next goal or they're going to be in real serious trouble. This game has been dominated by the Red Wings. Ward will knock one in. Whipped around on the boards again. Primo bumping with Ward, and it comes free. And Holzinger got the puck to center ice. Tapped in by Ray. Couldn't fight his way through the defense. Left back behind the net. Ray went firing in there. The wings recover and set it to center ice, where Wilson takes it away. And worked ahead again. But knocked down by Ward. Then he gave it away to Shannon. Shannon in over the line. Here's Shannon trying to clear it through. Knocked back in the corner. Primo put it right through the goal crease. Holzinger unable to come up with it. The wings stack back again. Left at center ice. Brought in over the line. And try to float it in front of the net. And, you know, shovels it around to Taylor. Taylor bothered by Wilson. They go to the wall together. But it's held in there by Dan Dino. His shot. Caroms off a skate. Wilson. Attempting to pry it free, went off balance, got up again, and rolls it around on the other side. But it took a funny hop, came right beside the net. And the Wings keeping it in again. Taylor lifting it back into the corner again. Back to the point to Rouse. His long shot, Hashik saw it all the way, and he will hang on to that one. And as we get near the six-minute mark here in the opening period, a face-off coming up. Well, Scotty Bowman has to be pleased with the way his hockey club has performed. And Again, I was talking to him for quite a while this morning, and he said, we, we had to change our hockey team. He says, you have to face reality. Two years ago, we lost four in a row. We were not good enough. Last year, we lost in the conference finals in six games. He says, we weren't good enough. We needed to make some changes. And of course, they picked up Brendan Shanahan. They brought some youngsters up, a couple of guys who have spent some years in the minor leagues. So they have changed the chemistry of this team. Kozlov keeping it in, the long shot. Hasek saw that one, no difficulty. And leaves it behind the net. Now it's worked around on the boards to Groshik. Groshik with a pass at center, but not a very good one, and it never got anywhere near Audet. Recovered by Zhitnik. He halts behind the net, works it up on the wing. Groshik failed to come up with that pass. Notice Detroit, they keep the winger way up high, and you'll see often three on threes as Buffalo break out of the zone. Yali kicks it into the corner. Larianov picks it up. Got it back to center ice. Kozlov is offside. And the linesman was just waiting until Kozlov put a stick on the puck to keep the whistle. And he did. Now Kozlov, a very talented offensive player, opened the scoring here tonight for the Detroit Red Wings. Last year, scored 36 goals for the Wings. And what was surprising about that, 22 of the goals came on the road. He continued his road scoring tonight. 5'10", 185 pounds. And again, teamed with Larry Onoff and Eisenman. This is some line. <laughs> Pusher. Gonna jam it out. Get, get in front of him. Eisenman picks it off. Back to Jamie Pusher again. He'll tap one in. Fontaine for Zitnik. Zitnik got it to center ice. Adet couldn't get away. Wings coming back. Eiserman. Eiserman. Check. That goes after it again. Zitnik couldn't get it. Came right out in front. And it's given away to Lafontaine. He got it in over the line for Adet. Trying to flip it behind the net. Does. Lafontaine. Back to Adet. Fires it off the glass. Back it comes to Schmelick. His shot is knocked out. Wings starting away on a three-on-two to Iserman. Iserman in over the line. Schmelich turns him around, knocks him down, and strips him of the puck. Buffalo coming right back again. Schmelich 
Works it in over the line. Tried to leave it there to the trailer. Well, it's stolen by Grosick. Clean and fun, and that's broken out. Wing starting away. Through the middle to Shanahan. Shanahan ripped his shot right on. Rebound. He got taken down. Hooked around behind the net, but play has been called, and Shanahan wiped out the Buffalo goal. Detroit, one in the first period, one in the second. They're ahead by just that many, two. A foul from Paris. From Milan. From St. Louis. Introducing a new look from Budweiser. Born on dating. It's the day your bud was born, because fresh beer tastes better. Nice label. Thanks. Because time is the most precious commodity of our time, you shouldn't spend it waiting to be helped. That's why at Independent Health, we're doing things to respond to your needs quickly. Like investing in technology that allows people to answer your calls, prepared to give answers and caring enough to remind you about the care you need. So when you find the time to sit down and choose a health plan, take an extra minute to look at us. Independent health, it's what we do that makes us different. Some of the folks enjoying the amenities of the Harbor Club here in the Marine Midland Arena. Shannon, Wilson, Shannon. And his pass went nowhere near anybody, but there'll be no icing. And the wings coming up with toward. Lost it. Came right beside the net. He the short side. And it was Vernon who held his ground to stop Peckett. Back at center ice. Peckett couldn't pick that one off. Right in over the line. A chance now for Detroit. And Rock going in on goal. He got knocked down. Here behind the net. Shannon around on the boards. Not out. Ward keeping it in there. Better off and Wilson wrestle. Shannon got it in front, and that one just rolled wide. A hook behind the net. Shanahan trying to get it in front again, and this time Hashik just hangs on long enough for a face-up. And the Buffalo Sabres are having a terrible time trying to contain the Red Wings inside the blue line. Detroit bigs, strong, quick. And guys like Fedorov, if you do not play the body, you're going to be in trouble all evening. And the Sabres have ended up many times just chasing the wings around. Here's an example. The Shanahan just fails to set up his partner to the right of Dominic Hasek. That was the point of the puck bounced over his stick. Shanahan seeing a little extra action tonight. Well, she should be well rested. He got traded. No, he got traded and then got suspended in his right. first game. They missed the second game. Wheeling around in his own end, around the referee Van Massenhoven. He not used his name very much. He must be doing a heck of a job. No penalties. Oh, here comes Zitnik to center. Zitnik lugging it himself in over the line. Five pusher into the corner. Out in front. He's shot by Brown. That one stopped by Rouse. Kept in by Ward to Brown. Intercepted. And then the wings will come back. McCarty away to center ice. He'll slap it in. Ashick coming out to play it. Around on the glass. Draper hustling after it now. McCarty. Who's check? Yally. Long shot. Ends up behind the net. Ashick claiming McCarty knocked him down. Right around on the board. Passed by Pekka. Working it ahead. But that's taken back by the wings. Sabres making a wholesale change with the exception of Galley. Long pass at center. Galley took down his man. Primo can't get anywhere, didn't see the puck. Finally, Ray chipped one in. Holzinger challenging the goaltender, Vernon. Back into the corner again. Set up along the boards, not out. Smell it, keeping it in. Here's Ray charging it through. Ray leaving it there to Primo. Primo trying to tie up his man. It comes around on the boards again to Dandino. And he managed to get it out to center ice. McKee fires it ahead for Primo and over the line to Ray. Ray cut off by Lidstrom. That's behind the net. Sabres steal it away again. Came out in front. That's knocked just wide. Here's Primo getting knocked down, trying to keep it in there. Rolled around on the boards again as Ray takes out his check, but it's fired back through center ice, and the wings come in over the line. Long shot. Hashik knocks it away. 
Buffalo coming right back again. The pass to Primo at center, but he's dead tired. He catches up with it. Nice play, and then flips it in and heads off for a rest. Gross using the glass to set at the center. Wilson for Groshek. Groshek wheeling around, looking for LaFontaine. Cuts in over the line. Oh, it in front of LaFontaine. Couldn't pick up with it. LaFontaine's got it again. LaFontaine out in front. Oh, that trying to jam it in the short side. They poke at it behind the net. Again, got it to LaFontaine. Trying to poke it in. Can't do it. Kozlov finally fires it down the ice. And the best sustained pressure of the night by the Buffalo Sabres is negated with the icing call against Detroit. Here's Donald Adet with an opportunity, and as Rick was mentioning, Buffalo finally able to put some pressure on Detroit, but not able to score on Vernon as LaFontaine jammed at it, as did Adet. minutes and a little bit remaining in the second period. Up in the long shot. Goes wide of the goal. Hooked around on the Brewers. Wilson tried to reach for it and ends up to Lariano. He feeds it to Eiserman. Who had to wait. Would have been offside. Wilson curling around. Now drops it off to Plant. Derek Plant looking for room as he rips back to center ice. He'll dish one in. Vernon handles that off the boards. Not out. And then Dom is connecting on it. Kozlov starts back. Kozlov in over the line. Leaving it there to Lariano. He tried to dump it in front. Iserman spinning again. He gave it away. Then got it back again. Iserman backing it behind the goal. Fed all the way around to the boards. And kept in by the wings again. Erickson. Iserman. Iserman leaving it there. Out in front. That's knocked down and sent away to center ice to Burridge. Burridge is by himself, however, and gets cut off by Ward. As both teams are trying to engineer a change. Ward flipping it ahead to Kozlov. The long pass at center. Brought back in over the line to Fedorov. Fedorov spun out. In the corner, Pekka takes a tap. Pekka coming away. Pekka in over the line. Hooks his way through. Pekka the shot. And that's cleared away. Ward couldn't connect on the rebound. Got back in over the line by Shanahan and recovered by Galley. Galley got checked. However, it comes to center ice. Carrying on is Brown. Brown in over the line. Pekka fired it just wide of the net. Jam behind the goal. Pekka's got it again. There's nobody out in front. Pekka working it back to the point. Jippers put his shot. It's blasted around to the boards again. Galley trying to hold it in there and it squirts high in the air and ends up going down the ice. Pass up at center to Pekka. He feathered it up ahead to Galley, but it's cleared away to the blue line to Draper. Draper turning. Pekka cut him off and tapped it back in the other direction where Lidstrom recovers. Intercepted and left at center to Galley. Working it back into the corner. Holzinger racing in there. Sends it behind the net for Primo. Primo drops it off to Ray. He can't get anywhere. The wings will clear it ahead for Brown at center. Brown tapping it off into the corner. Rolls in behind the net. Hashi comes way out of the net. And there's going to be a penalty coming up here. Smell it. Was taken off his feet. And the Sabres will go on the power play. Down by two with less than seven minutes remaining in the first ever National Hockey League season game in the Marine Midland Arena. Determined and smaller, a lot smaller. These days, things are bigger, like McDonald's new deluxe chicken and fish sandwiches. And when you buy one in a deluxe sandwich extra value meal, you'll get America's favorite fries and Coca-Cola supersized for free. You'll kill Yeah. What? 
Look a little pale. Free supersizing for a limited time at McDonald's. The first penalty of tonight's hockey game is called against the Detroit Red Wings' Chris Draper. And the Sabres, who in the last five minutes are beginning to gain some momentum, will yep. Yep. try to score the first goal of the night. Being outshot 24 to 13 in this game. Plant could not keep it in, and it goes to center. It could not get it out, I should say. Now rolled around behind the net. Now Fontaine will leave it back there. Here's Zitnik, wheeling it ahead to Schmelik. Schmelik in over the line. That's going to be an offside. And when the Detroit Red Wing defense stand up like that, that puck has to go deep. It's so difficult to try to stick handle your way into the zone. You either go offside, as happened on that play, or you try to stick handle in and have the puck knocked away from you. So a good play by Detroit to stand up Buffalo at the blue line. So, 18 seconds gone in the penalty, they'll try it again. Smelly. Left behind the net, Ligstrom is back there, and he just spies an opening and takes advantage of it. Why not? There goes Zitnik. He wants to lug the mail himself again, gets to the Detroit. Oh boy, this is way offside. Odette and Plank were both in there. Now that's just what I was talking about. Yeah. The, the play has to go deep when Detroit lines up across the line, and Zitnik is upset at himself. And I talked to Alex uh, on the West Coast trip. And he was saying that he certainly wants to utilize the other players on the ice more. He felt that last year he tried to do too much, tried to take it end to end, ended up either going or causing an offside, as in that case, or skating himself into a corner with nowhere to go. Galley recovering at center. He'll send it back inside his own line. And it's worked ahead. Now the pass across ice. Galley difficulty with a recalcitrant puck. Puts it over on the other side finally to Zipnik. He's here, you try it. Over it goes again to Burridge. Burridge brings it in over the line. Slapped by Daw around behind the net. However, Pusher trying to get there first, but Zipnik moves up and takes it away. Now Pusher recovers again. Burridge holding it in, gets knocked down, and the Wings cap it down the ice with only 45 seconds left in the power play opportunity. Pashik sending it ahead. In over the line comes Burridge again. Burridge spinning on the wall, trying to keep it in there. Still kicking at it. Galley got intercepted. Comes to center ice now. A chance. Eisenman got shot down. And the wings screaming for a penalty. Worked up ahead to Burridge once more. Oh, Daw, I beg your pardon. He overskates the puck. And the Sabres have nothing going at the moment on this man advantage situation. Here's Daw, the backhand to tap it in. Only a dozen seconds remain in the power play. And it's whistled right back down the ace again as the wings make more changes. Zitnik picking it up and Detroit back at full strength. Draper steps out there. Way to center comes Smelik, his backhand. Rolling it off into the corner. Up the round on the boards. Shannon tried to keep it in. Roshik does. It was shot, knocked down, a bit, got it out in front, came all the way back to the point. Schmelik holds it in to Groshek. Groshek trying to leave it there, he gets checked and it's worked out to center ice. Wings coming back once more, in over the line, cleared in front, broken up neatly by Groshek who came back on the play. But Ward keeps it in there, that's fed around on the board, Shannon poked at it, didn't get it out. Wings came in front of the net again, high in the air, right in the goal crease, Shannon. He fielded it first of all and then knocked it away. Groshek out of the round to Schmelich. Schmelich off the glass but not out. Red Wings keeping it in again. Groshek rolled it around on the boards and finally it comes to center on deck coming back. Again out of the line with Peck out there. The pick is in the and he fired it wide with a wide open net. Now it's cleared out the center. Detroit trying to come back but the Sabres will cover up. Great opportunity for Buffalo's Peck up. And over the line, Ray sticks it into the corner. After it is Pusher. Pusher behind the net. He got tagged back there. Ward knocks it free and clears it to center ice. And away come the wings again. Federoff slips it into the middle. Whoa! And Hasek robs Shanahan. Great club save by Dominic Hasek. 
to keep the score. Detroit two, Buffalo nothing. Lead in the second period. First is hotline. What's the problem? Man, my party is lame. I think I got some skunky beer. Sir, relax. When was your beer born? Born? What are you talking about? It doesn't have a born on date? A what? Do you have any Budweiser? No, man, you gotta help me. Okay, remain calm, sir. We're on our way. New Born On Dating from Budweiser. Because fresh beer tastes better. Go, 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 go. Sir, put down the skunky beer and slowly back away. What if I get a frag on my throat? What if I can't see the writing on the wall? What if she didn't have to pay for doctor visits? What if I can see any doctor I want? Introducing the new Community Blue Advantage, the plan you can make your own. What if I didn't have to worry about the quality of my health coverage? What if I had more flexibility? More choices! What if we could get exactly, exactly what, what we want? want? The new Community Blue Advantage. Ask your employer today. Some terrific scoring chances at both ends of the rink. Donald Adet sets up Mike Pekka, and Pekka fires it over top of the net. Detroit coming back. Watch Dominic Hasek, though. Look at how he's just in position. He knew that that Fedorov was going to pass that puck to Shanahan, and he made a difficult save look easy. A shot from the point now. That one misses. Blasted around on the boards. And finally, it's worked out through center ice. The wings to catch up with it. Pusher. He gets tattooed in the corner by Daw. Stuck back behind the net. Rouse coming up with it. Rouse used the glass over Shannon's head and down the ice. Wilson. He was some difficulty in there. Didn't get it out. Detroit keeping it in. Spinning back in as LaPointe feeding it behind the net. It's worked around on the boards. Not out. There's Shannon to break up the play behind the net. Working it ahead to the blue line and out to center. Burridge chasing Rouse around. And it goes to Lariana. He taps it ahead. Eiserman in over the line. Eiserman bothered by Shannon who fell. Hasek helps out. They'll roll it ahead out to center ice. Two and a half to go here in the second period. Woodstrom, he just fired that one all the way down into the Buffalo end. Not far enough for icing, however. Franked around on the glass. Larry on off, keeping it in. That's taken away and dribbled up on the wing. Comes to center ice. Ward trying to leave it there, but he gets knocked down. And Detroit's Eiserman coming back again. Eiserman leaves it back there to Larry. And off the shot. Just deflected wide of the post. Ward squeezes it around to Pekka. Pekka now guiding it back through the middle. And a long pass is recovered by Constantino. He took a bump from Pekka. Dribbled onto Constantinov's stick again. That hit escaped. And the wings will recover. And we have less than two minutes remaining in the second period. Ward picks it off and loses control. Larianov takes it away and play is called on a delayed offside. And let's head back down to Dennis Williams. Thanks very much, guys. Coming up in the second intermission, Rick and Jim will have an interview with Seymour Knox the fourth. And we'll also have another feature on Seymour Knox the third. And of course, you experts will give us some more analysis. Back upstairs to Rick and Jim. Just a minute and a half remaining in this second period. And the Sabres had a burst of energy at one point in the period, but at the moment, uh, most of the play is confined to between the blue lines. Well, the last couple of moments. Gross catches up with it in the corner. Gross trying to get the puck, can't do it, and it goes around on the other side for Dan Deneau. Gross keeping it in there. He could not control it, however. And it'll be brought back to center ice. Audette missing his check. And it's tapped into the corner. Taylor took a run at Zitnik and bounced off him. Galley takes it away. That deflects all the way back into Detroit territory. Groshek trying to catch up with the puck. Bumps with Rose in the corner. LaFontaine could not get it. Here's Audette spinning away. Audette on his knees. Back of the net. LaFontaine. LaFontaine. Got it back to Galley. Galley fires one in front of the net and it's swept away by Dandino. Dandino sending it up to center race now. The wing's coming back. Then over the line, Johnson. Got it to the trailer. Quick shot. Knocked down in front of the net. Sabres recover and start right back again. The pass to Zitnik. Zitnik into Detroit territory for a Tried to force it in front. 
Goes around behind the net. And the it's Sherman in the short side. A dead after it again. He locks it free. And there's going to be another penalty coming up here as the goaltender covers up. And a dead had the legs swept out from under him. All right, what an inspirational game. Donald Adet is playing again here tonight. One of the better Buffalo forwards. And his determination around that Detroit net causes the Red Wings to take a penalty. And it's Doug Brown who is going to the penalty box as Adet outfights him for the puck. Brown becomes frustrated and trips Adet to the ice. And so with 22.2 seconds to go here in the second, the faceoff in the Red Wing zone. Now the Sabres had the man advantage earlier in this period and did nothing with it. Mm -hmm. They got another opportunity and now with Doug Brown out. One of the reasons that they did nothing was because they refused to get the puck in deep. Some penalty killing. LaFontaine wins the draw. Yeah, we cleared right in front of the net, and it's deflected away as Daw was camped right there along with LaFontaine and Burry. Galley is one of the better defensemen in the NHL at making that play, sort of faking the shot toward the net and then making the hard pass to a winger or a centerman parked in front of the goaltender. Now that's what Galley does. Watch on the left of the screen. As this is not a shot, this is a hard pass to either Daw or LaFontaine. And they connected and deflected the puck, however, not into the net, but over the glass. And so, the faceoff outside the blue line. Galley trying to get away again. He tried to work it in over the line, and that didn't fare too well. Now it's tapped right back in. That looked outside, but it's not going to be called that way. The wings don't get it out. That's a shot. Rebound is kicked away. Set back to plan again as the horn goes to end the second period of play. The Sabres getting the scoring opportunities on the power play, but leaving the ice on the short end of the count. Yes, again, though, it was the Detroit Red Wings uh, who controlled the play in that second period, beating Dominic Hasek one time and out shooting the Sabres by 25 to 15. When the third period gets underway, the Sabres will find themselves starting on the power play, but trailing after two periods by a score of two to nothing here at the Marine Midland Arena. You said you'd never give up luxury car comfort. You said you wanted style and performance. You said you wanted something fun to drive. Well, now you can get all that plus a great deal. And guess what? It's a minivan, a Ford Windstar, actually. For a limited time, you can get $1,500 back on a new 96 Windstar or choose a $279 a month red carpet lease. So what do you say now? Well, I'd say that this offer ends soon, so hurry to your local Ford dealer today. If you've been thinking about pursuing a career in sports or upgrading your current education for promotion, or maybe you've been thinking about a career change, then you should think about the Masters of Science in Sport Administration program at Canisius College. One of only four programs of its kind in the country, the Sport Administration program has formed affiliations with major professional sports organizations across the country. And with our highly experienced and qualified faculty, the Masters of Science in Sport Administration at Canisius College is the one program in Western New York for you. Call now for more information. When he can, Tom Licata likes to get away from the stresses of everyday life. Fortunately, he's an M&T Bank customer, because with supermarket branches open seven days a week, telephone banking, and access to thousands of ATMs, M&T has made things a lot more convenient for Tom. In fact, right now, he's paying his bills with M&T's online banking service, which always comes in handy when you're really busy. M&T, all the bank you'll ever need. Detroit Red Wings got one in the first and one in the second and have claimed a 2-0 lead over the Buffalo Sabres at the end of two periods of play here in the first ever regular season game at the Marine Midland Arena. And I don't know that tonight that uh, the gentleman who's standing between us hasn't had more airtime than we have. Huh? I think so. <laughs> Se Seymour knocks the fourth and uh, I, I know that this had to be an enormously night for you, an enormous night for you and your family and it, i i want to tell you I, I was having a little trouble i still am you're not alone in I, I that know. department I, rick it's been uh it's been a marvelous night for our entire family it's great to 
actually see my brothers and my sister and my mom is back in town and uh, it's a wonderful night and it's a great tribute for my for my dad and I know he's watching down and hopefully he's going to get us that first big win here. <laughs> you know, Seymour, uh, how, how your dad loved hockey, didn't he? Uh, how he loved hockey, uh, the Buffalo Sabres in this community. Well, he sure did, Jim, and, and he, he loved you too. And you know, all the uh, great years you had with us earlier and the years and he loved Rick and right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the only thing is, you're telling me you're looking down. You're almost asking you know, that he's going to score the goals in this game. I think you got to worry about your hockey team doing something like that. Huh? Well, we do. It looks like uh, we we got to get our uh, play up a little bit more. We got to take some more shots. Although we uh, shot Detroit that period, and uh, Donaldson playing pretty well, but he needs a little bit more help too. The the, uh, the emotional part of, of tonight, Seymour. I, I know it was very difficult, uh, and and I want to just go down for a moment to the plaque uh, that was unveiled uh, where the Sabers come out onto the ice, uh, a very emotional moment. Yeah, it really, it really was, Jim. We uh, unveiled it about 6 o'clock tonight, and as you can see, the plaque is uh, very pretty. It's a great likeness of my father and my Uncle Norty, and uh, very deserving. The bank was kind enough to dedicate the rink uh, to them when they were both inducted into the Sabres Hall of Fame. And it, it's just a great night for everybody. Tell us, uh, of course, the whole club was down there. The whole team came out of the dressing room. Tell us uh, what Pat LaFontaine then said. Well, Pat made... Uh, a few nice words, and uh, gave my mom a big kiss, and uh, gave my aunt Seta a big kiss, and it was it was just really very moving, and uh, it was sort of a new Rockney thing. Every time the players go out on the ice, they want to touch Seymour and Norty on the nose or on the uh, on those bald spots. <laughs> what do you see for the future of this franchise now, Seymour? Uh, well, I think we have a lot more stability now, Rick. We've got a good young team, and we've got a great nucleus, and we've got a lot of uh, good young players, and uh, hopefully they'll all gel together and then we'll be able to fill in. All right. Thank you, Seymour. Knox the fourth. Thanks, Rick. It's great to be here. And we're going to tell you now that the Buffalo Sabres are trailing in this game two to nothing. And there she is, the lovely Jeannie Knox, looking on and enjoying a great evening here at the Marine Midland Arena. The Alfred Saxons are back in action, and head coach Jim Moretti is ready to make the call. He joins Cliff Smith and Saxon football athletes to discuss game highlights and prospects on Saxon Football Report, Wednesday nights at 7.30 on Empire Sports Network. local Jeep and Eagle dealer. And now, from Paris. From Milan. From St. Louis. Introducing a new look from Budweiser. Born on dating. It's the day your bud was born because fresh beer tastes better. Nice label. Thanks. What if I get a frog in my throat? What if I can't see the writing on the wall? What if she didn't have to pay for doctor visits? What if I can see any doctor I want? Introducing the new Community Blue Advantage, the plan you can make your own. What if I didn't have to worry about the quality of my health coverage? What if I had more flexibility? More choices. What if we could get exactly, exactly what, what we want? The new Community Blue Advantage. Ask your employer today. Be sure to catch high school highlights at its special time this Friday night live at 1130 on Empire Sports Network. Welcome back to the Marine Midland Arena where the score after two periods of play, Detroit leads Buffalo 2 to nothing on a first period goal and a second period goal. Well, I am in the busy, busy Harbor Club. Huge crowd in here. This is where everybody can come and be social during the intermission. They certainly are. Obviously, this has been an absolutely incredible night for everybody, but particularly for the Knox family. And we have more for you now on the man whose vision made this night all possible.
stash your stuff. Now we're building more bins and boxes and a great new place to put them. The new Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. We packed our full-size Ram with Magnum power. Now we're reloading. The new Magnum-powered Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. The joint's always jumping. Friday, October 18th. Marine Midland Arena, Buffalo. One night only. Come see the sizzle as the Toronto Raptors take on Alonzo Morning in the Miami Heat in the Molson preseason shootout. Catch Damon Sotomayor, Marcus Tamby, and all the Toronto Raptors entertainment. Tickets start at just $15 at the box office or by calling 716-888-4000 or 888-223-6000 now. Because the joint's always jumping. Everybody, I'm Jim Brunson. I'm Howard Simon. And if you missed Fan TV this past week, you missed Todd Collins, Marcel Dion, Hank Goldberg, and Larry Carrier. On Monday, a complete breakdown of the Bills Dolphins game. Plus, the NBA week starts. Raptors Heat come to town. We'll talk to Isaiah Thomas, Pat Riley, Alonzo Mourning, and Marcus Camby. And we'll be all over Big Four College basketball, John Feline and Jack Armstrong in studio. Fan TV, your voice, your choice. The offense in this game has belonged almost solely to the Detroit Red Wings, and they are the proud owners of a 2-0 lead over Buffalo at the end of two periods. Well, I don't think there's any doubt about it that the Detroit Red Wings have been the offensive team so far in this period. The Sabres have had their moments, but they have been too few and far between. The that's only thing is, when they start the next period, they are on the power play. Yeah, that, that's right. And, uh, you know, again, Buffalo, give them credit for battling back, particularly toward the, oh, the middle of the second period. They started to get some pressure on Detroit and started to get some scoring chances. But we want to show you the goal by the Detroit Red Wings. And it was just a terrific play by Jamie Pusher behind uh, or inside inside the Detroit zone. He spots Larian up. That's Larian up just outside the blue line. Look at this great pass. No Buffalo Saber in sight and walks for Dominic Hasek. Here he comes. Usually he makes this play, mm -hmm. but he ends up throwing his stick and he's going to toss his blocker as Iserman shoots it into the empty net. Uh, just a terrific heads up play by Pusher, uh, Larry Onoff, and then Steve Eiserman. Well, I would have been very interested to see what would have happened if he had knocked the puck off of the stick of Eiserman because there would have been all kinds of problems after, uh, it was no doubt about it, he let the stick go. And we're going to get a look now at the Karuba collision tonight. Make the right decision. Insist on Karuba collision. And there have been some dandies in this hockey game. Single one in the corner right now is Richard Schmelich, who's on the losing end, I guess you might say, of that check. Well, there, that's right, uh, Richard Schmelich uh, pursuing the puck into the corner, uh, and that's what happens uh, when, you, when you play the puck and you have somebody on you, normally you're, you're going to get pounded. Well, we're almost ready to take a break and be back for the third period of play here at the Marine Midland Arena. Buffalo Sabres are in a 2-0 hole as we get set for the third. You said you'd never give up luxury car comfort. You said you wanted style and performance. You said you wanted something fun to drive. Well, now you can get all that plus a great deal. And guess what? It's a minivan. A Ford Windstar, actually. For a limited time, you can get $1,500 back on a new 96 Windstar or choose a $279 a month red carpet lease. So what do you say now? Well, I'd say that this offer ends soon, so hurry to your local Ford dealer today. If you've been thinking about pursuing a career in sports or upgrading your current education for promotion, or maybe you've been thinking about a career change, then you should think about the Masters of Science in Sport Administration program at Canisius College. One of only four programs of its kind in the country, the Sport Administration program has formed affiliations with major professional sports organizations across the country. And with our highly experienced and qualified faculty, the Masters of Science in Sport Administration at Canisius College is the one program in western New York for you. Call now for more information. 
to really get inside the NFL, there's some equipment you need. Introducing Topps NFL Cyber Cards. All the action, all the plays, all the stats, all on a CD-ROM. Each Cyber Card features a different NFL star, and there's 28 different Cyber Cards to collect. So for the hardest hitting look you've ever seen, it's Cyber Card. As close as you can get to the game without getting dirty. To order with American Express, MasterCard, or Visa, call 1-800-341-7755 or send check or money order to the address on the screen. Take a look at the stats thus far in this hockey game after two periods of play. None of that surprising, partner. Well, the Detroit Red Wings are leading in shots on goal. That always doesn't indicate the play. However, it does tonight. Faceoffs about even. Detroit the edge in the odd man rushes and in scoring chances. And we have had only a couple of penalties called in this game, and the Sabres are going to begin with the man advantage again. 138 left in the penalty to Doug Brown. Lots of Buffalo Sabres action at the Marine Midland Arena this month. On Tuesday night, the Sabres will take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. On Thursday, calendar night, the Sabres meet Mario Lemieux and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Then on Thursday, a week later, on the 24th, the Montreal Canadiens will make their first trip to this new Marine Midland Arena. October 26th, the Sabres take on the Whalers. That's family fun night. The Buffalo News presenting Circus Night at the Sabres. Bring the family and you can win tickets to see Ringling Brothers Circus. Clowns, prizes, whole lot more. The Sabres take on the Hartford Whalers. All coming up later this month. Buffalo beginning this third period as Brown sits in the penalty box. The Sabres with the mad advantage. 138 remaining in the Detroit penalty. They chop away at it at center ice, tipped up ahead off LaFontaine. Apparently it didn't hit LaFontaine, but it's cleared around on the board. Adet keeping it in, trying to stuff it back to the point. It's jammed back through the neutral zone, and LaFontaine covering up for his defense. Galley swinging around. Galley watched by Eisenman, gives it to Plant. Plant through center. Ooh. Tip one off into the corner. Konstantinov cranks it off the boards. Galley kicked it free. Adet comes up with it now, leaving it to Galley. He works it down low. Back to Galley again. Galley slings it to Platt, jamming it into the corner now. Brown couldn't control the puck, and the wings do. Up to center ice. Eiserman in over the line. Here's Taylor. the fact that the Sabres were using a defenseman playing the for a forward playing the point and Detroit builds its lead to three nothing what a great individual effort by Tim Taylor from Stratford Ontario spent six years in the minors and this is what happens sometimes when you're killing a penalty see Derek Plant number 26 is playing defense and not doing a very good job of it Taylor takes advantage of that and scores in Dominic Kashuk, and that's what you do. You pick on someone who's out of position like that, and the Red Wings did it perfectly. Zitnik, back behind the net. He'll try and bring it away, but that misses everybody. No icing runs, but waving it off. Silver's trying to hold it in there. That Fontaine couldn't come up with it. That goes behind the goal. You smell it. Kicks it back into the corner again. Pusher. He gets tied up. Lost control of the puck. Smellick moving in to keep it in there. Burridge took a bump. Frank Rose around on the glass again. Swept out to center ice by the point. And now the wing 
Wings return to full strength, and the power play of Buffalo backfires. Smellick trying to get away. He managed to force it in over the line, but it's clipped right back out again by the Wings. See, there's a, another example. Richard Smellick, instead of just getting the puck in deep, attempted to carry it, attempted to do it himself, got checked, and the puck ends up back in the Buffalo zone. Checked it. A piece of his check. Smellick will drop it off. And let's work back as far as center ice. But broken up again. Now Zitnik. For Richard Smellick once more. Tries to gain center and does. Putting it off into the corner. It's flipped around on the boards for Shanahan. Ends up back at center ice on Shannon's stick. To Wilson to Shannon. Two and a half minutes gone by here in the third. Wilson. Making the move, they're coming to center and cranking one up. Tip to the corner, Ward going after it. Ward got smoked back there. He got hit. Now they jam around on the boards again. Buffalo's Ward got hit by Detroit's Ward. A few people are challenging one another now. And the linesmen have their hands full trying to make some peace. Well, it's Mike Pekka who is going to the penalty box as he got upset at Ward for knocking down Dixon Ward, his teammate, and Pekka ran him in the corner and pays with a two-minute penalty. And Pekka has been one of the players tonight who has delivered a couple of solid checks. Here's the play as Ward is flattened by Ward of the Red Wings. And it was Mike Pekka who then got himself involved and went to the penalty box. Here he comes right here. So for the first time tonight, Detroit will try in the power play. And will they throw out the all-Russian power play? No, they will not. There's a Swede and on a, defense. And an Iserman. <laughs> and a Shanahan up front, so so much for that. Yeah, you're right. At least for the moment. Federoff playing one point. And it's Lidstrom on the other. Lidstrom tapping it across ice for Johnson. He's forced back. Now left to Iserman. Iserman in over the line to Federoff. Took his shot. And that hurts. Wilson got in front of it and is trying to get back to his feet and does. Good and play. He's skating it off. Good play by Mike Wilson getting himself in position on Federoff. And Dominic Hasek was talking about Sergei Federoff to me this morning and I asked him what Fedorov or where he liked to shoot the puck, and Dominic said, well, he, not particularly where he shoots it, but he says, I'll tell you one thing, he shoots the puck as hard as anyone in the NHL. Really? That's all he talked about. It was how hard Fedorov shot it. Fedorov plays the point in this Detroit power play, and of course, he's back there, of course, to shoot it, but he's also very creative where he can feather that puck into the forwards. Lidstrom keeping it in, rolling it down low, Johnson feeding it around behind the net. Wings keeping it in to Federoff, to Lidstrup. Screen shot, that deflected wide. Taken away by McKee. He got it to the line, but not out. Lidstrom keeping it in there again for Iserman. Iserman to Johnson. Johnson back to Iserman. Iserman for Lidstrom. Lidstrom to Iserman. Steve Iserman circling around. Took the long shot, that went wide of the net. Kept in again by the wings. Federoff, they poke it beside the net again. Schmelick recovered the puck, couldn't get it out. Wings keeping it in, jammed back in the corner. <laughs> Schmelick just grabbed that one and threw it out to center ice. Finally, it'll be shoveled into Detroit territory. Less than a minute remaining in the Wings power play. Holzinger doing some floor checking. Sent around on the boards. Wilson will keep it in. Federoff having difficulty back there. LaFontaine on him. Now Lariano. He's trying to pick his way out of his own zone for Fedorov. Fedorov swings it in to Kozlov. Kozlov hanging on to the puck. Kozlov to Fedorov to Kozlov. They got their own game going. He works it down low. Larianov and but Fedorov shot it wide. Rolled around on the boards. Kept in by Dandino. Pashik helped it all the way around to the other side, but not out. The wings keeping it in there. And poke at it again. Tying it up, it squirts free to Lariano, but he sends it all the way back into his own end, and Buffalo returns to full strength. Approaching the five-minute mark here in the third period. 
Kuzma. Feeling it in behind the net. Pekka tried to hold it in. Does. Took a shot. That one caroms off into the corner. Sabres will hold it in to Brown. That's worked around on the boards, and it's going to end up at center ice where Zitnik tracks it down. Detroit changing. On pass ahead for Galley. He eases it off into the corner. Rose going after it. Rose taken out by Daw. Pekka keeping it in there. Trying to get it to Daw again. They jam it back into the corner. Comes back to the point to Galley. He cleared it in front. He shot. He scores! Finally hammered home by Mike Pekka on the short side. And the Buffalo Sabres get on the board. Trailing 3-1. I mentioned earlier in this hockey game about Gary Galley is excellent at picking the loose forwards in front of the net and instead of blasting the puck on the goaltender, he makes the play to the forward. Well, here it is. And Pekka, who has had a strong game tonight for Buffalo, slips this one in on the short side. Vernon got a piece of it, but the Sabres score on this beautiful setup from Gary Galley. And Pekka has been the best Buffalo forward here tonight. Oh, and Audet almost got away. And he runs into the goaltender. Vernon, who went out for a skate. Finally cleared away. It ends up back at center ice. Brown takes out his check, and he and Draper exchange hats. Tip back inside the Detroit line. Rolling wide on it. Black on team trying to catch up with it. Kicked it out in front. Brown couldn't connect. Came back to the point and ends up at center ice. Jitnik picks it off. And he fans on it. <laughs> fans on it again. They get another try. On the wing it comes to Audette. Audette clears it into left. Fontaine back and couldn't get it away as it swept away from him by Konstantinov. Set back to center ice. The wing's chasing after it. And over the line, Iserman. Iserman took his shot. Hashik stayed with him and ends up sitting on top of the puck to make the save. Steve Eiserman with a great opportunity, but foiled by Hashik, and it remains 3-1 Detroit. We have a wonderful 75 Le Puy Cabernet, or an exquisite 58 Le Boussemillon, or a 62 Je vous Pinot, if you're in the mood for... No, 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 no. Enough of that old stuff. The lady and I would prefer something fresh. How about something in a lager? What do you got in a Budweiser from, say, early this month? Budweiser. Guaranteed fresh with born-on dates. In the early days of the NFL, players were tough, scrappy, determined, and smaller. A lot smaller. These days, things are bigger, like McDonald's new deluxe chicken and fish sandwiches. And when you buy one in a deluxe sandwich extra value meal, you'll get America's favorite fries and Coca-Cola supersized for free. You okay, little dude? Yeah. Why? You look a little pale. Free supersizing for a limited time at McDonald's. Snorkin' Buffalo is on the board, but the Sabres still trailing by two. Kozla tapping it into the corner. McKee swings it all the way around to Daw. They tip it to the blue line, and it ends up at center ice. As the check thrown by Constantina did not connect on Platt, but back come the wings again. Larry on off the shot. scores! Larry on off blisters that one in on the short side. As they set up a two-on-one, and the Wings quickly build their lead back up to a three-goal margin. Now, this line tonight of Larry Onoff, Eisenman, and Kozlov has been just terrific. Look at this pass. And that is wonderful hockey. And Dominic Hasek, you see, when Larry Onoff has the puck, you never know what he's going to shoot, pass. Hasek leaned to the left as Kozlov was heading to the front of the net, and Larianov beat him on the short side. And sometimes not a bad gamble by the goaltender, because Larianov usually passes, right? Exactly right. Larianov always chucks up many assists, a very unselfish player who doesn't shoot the puck often. But boy, he shot it at the right time on that occasion, and outsmarted Hasek, which seldom happens. But wasn't that some play in the neutral zone to spring Larianov loose? Boy. Well, the wings four to one. 
Sent across to Lidstrom, and he'll work it up on the wing. Dreiserman, he gets checked, but it's still rattled right back in by the front. Dribbled into the corner to Ray. Ray, bothered by Kozlov, sends it to Wilson. For Shannon. Shannon halting to shake Iserman. Who guides it ahead to Ray, trying to get away at center ice, cannot control the puck. We're back at center again. Shannon just sails it across where Rob Ray covers up with the wings changing. Shannon for Holzinger to Ray. He hacks it in, trying to go after it. And then he gets tied up by Shanahan. And Ray runs into his check-in behind the net and runs into the net. Out to center ice it comes. Worked back in over the line to Fedorov. Cleared it in front, going in, they shut the score! The point was sent in all alone by Fedorov. And steps it upstairs. And Detroit with the largest lead of the night, now 5-1. to one. Again, the Red Wings scoring on the rush. And right here at the blue line, the Sabres allow LaPointe to get to the front of the net. Gary Galley had a chance at him. Look at this shot. Just underneath the crossbar, and the Red Wings are hot tonight. They had only scored four goals coming into tonight's game, but the report was that was not because they were not getting the chances. Here's LaFontaine trying to come up with it in the corner now, but he gets squeezed out rather rudely. And he got hammered in there, came in front, knocked down. Kept in by Buffalo. Kelly flipped it in wide of the net. LaFontaine curls right through the goal crease with it. Better off, chopped it back onto LaFontaine's stick. In behind the goal, it goes to Audet. Put it out in front, and Brown couldn't get there in time. To center ice, LaFontaine carries on. Into the Buffalo zone, but it cleared in front of the net. That's kicked away. Sabres will come back again with Zhitnik. Zhitnik for LaFontaine. He'll tap it into the corner. Adek charging in there. He gets screened off the play, and the wings fire it back through the neutral area. Key breaking that up. Another whack at it. He tangles with Taylor. Came to the line. It's kicked free and recovered by Dahl. Dawes pass to Burridge. Didn't get it out. Wings keeping it in. Slides back into the corner. McKee charging in there again. Bounces it around. Draper kept it in. Deflected right on. Uh, came out in front. They score again. Dan in a left alone in front of the net. Slams it home. And it's now 6-1 to one for the Red Wings. As the Buffalo Sabres stand and watch Detroit Red Wings fill the net. This is... Such a poor performance by Buffalo here in the third. Not taking the body, just chasing around. Watch in front of the net. And Dan Deneau, how about this story? Here's a kid trying to make the hockey club. Has been playing defense. He played defense last night against Calgary. Played 19 minutes on defense. Is playing forward here tonight. Has never played defense in his NHL career. And is doing everything and more the Red Wings are asking of him. So the Red Wings now with a five-goal lead as we approach the midway point of the third period. The car you'll never get over just landed at your Pontiac dealer. The new 1997 Wide Track Grand Prix from Pontiac. See how wider is better at your Pontiac dealers of Western New York. It's not surprising that with their children out of diapers, the Malones are preparing for the day their kids go to college. And it's not surprising that in their 20th year of marriage, the Coleman's are planning for retirement. Nor is it surprising that with the birth of their third grandchild, the Morrises are thinking of ways to help provide for them. What may be surprising, however, is that all of these people found the help they needed at the same place where they bank. M&T, all the bank you'll ever need. What do you call that? Economy of shots, I guess, huh? Yes, sir. Boy, Detroit sharp shooting tonight. Well, the Sabres called the time out there to try and regroup. 11 minutes left in the third period. Taylor knocking it free, clears it up the middle, and Detroit's Johnson comes away. Johnson to the Buffalo line. 
Left it back there to Taylor. Taylor carries on. Taylor tied up by Wilson and left up by him a bit. Wilson chasing behind the net, recovers, got it up on the wing. Out to center ice. Not any farther, though. Johnson comes back and then gives it away. Up to Shannon. Oh, and Daw couldn't pick it up, and that's going to go down the ice, and Buffalo's going to get called here for icing. This date in Sabres history brought to you by Rosina Italian Sausage and Meatballs. Yes, sir, 1991. Dave McElwain. Remember Dave? He wasn't here very long. And in Quebec, you remember Quebec? Well, he was stopped on a penalty shot. Wings keeping it in now. The puck ending up at center ice, however. And recovered by Lidstrom. Halfway through the third period. Dumped across on the wing for Ward. He can't get anywhere. Puts it back in the corner again. Primo went tumbling in there and Detroit breaking it up. The center ice. Chipped ahead. Galley get in there to mess up that Detroit rush. Groshek gets taken out at center by Constantino. Cleared in the other direction. Draper. Galley took down his check and might have got away with one there. Head for Ward. Ward will dribble one into the corner. Buffalo changing behind him. Wings lost it. Kept into Peck over shot, and he fired it over top of the net. Roshik got it to the corner to Pekka. He flipped it in. Ward got the lumber up on the other Ward. Again, there's going to be a Ward feud. Sabres trying to keep it in. It's not free. Lariana flipped it out to center ice to Kozlov. Kozlov will leave it back there. Brought in by Lariana. Leaves it to Iserman. He fired one. Hasek made the stop. Iserman keeping it in. Iserman to Lariana. Lariana drops it off to Iserman again. He got it out in front. Kozlov took a shot that went off the glass. Around on the other side, Aaron Ward holding it in. Hooked back into the corner, Kozlov to Lariana. Lariana lost control of it. And Pekka worked it out to center ice, but the wings steal it right back again. Kozlov will flip it in as Ray tried to get a chunk of him. Schmelik starts away. Schmelik up on the wing for Holzinger. Went behind him. Holzinger racing after it in the corner. Tapped it behind the net, but Rose strips it up. Fed around on the other side. Shanahan trying to get it out. It's another try. Now he clears it high in the air. Off a leg inside the Buffalo line. Federoff can't get there ahead of Shannon. Pass deflects through center ice. Ray will club it in and head for a rest. Vernon comes out behind the net. It's cleared up on the wing. Wilson, the long shot, wide of the net, kept in there by LaFontaine. Tried to jam it in front, but it's taken away by Shanahan. Shanahan to Federoff. Federoff working his way to the Buffalo line. He likes to spin back to allow his teammates to change. Now he gives it to Constantino. Works it over on the wing to Taylor. That's broken up. LaFontaine's pass didn't get to Audet. They poke at it again, back at center ice. LaFontaine starting away to Audet. Ripped the shot just wide of the net. Dumped around on the boards and cleared by Taylor through center ice. Wilson takes it down and guides it up ahead. Taylor colliding. Along with Shannon, Taylor getting it back and dumping it in. A little over seven minutes remaining here in the third period as the Kings make another change. Cross ice pass ends up on... Shannon stick, he goes after it once more and belts this one around behind the Detroit net. Pass squeezed up on the wing. Brown couldn't get anywhere. That dribbles into Buffalo territory. Kelly tracking it down. By the referee and inside the Detroit zone. Linesman say nope, no icing there. Fed out to center. Red Wings coming back again. Knocked in over the line by McCarty. Hashik slings it around for Burridge. Burridge takes a peek. He manages to clear it off a teammate at the Buffalo bench and play is called. Six and a half minutes remaining in the third period. And Detroit in control. For Caravan, we invented new ways to stash your stuff. 
Now we're building more bins and boxes and a great new place to put them. The new Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. We packed our full-size Ram with Magnum power. Now we're reloading. The new Magnum powered Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. In the early days of the NFL, players were tough, scrappy, determined, and smaller. A lot smaller. These days, things are bigger, like McDonald's new deluxe chicken and fish sandwiches. And when you buy one in a deluxe sandwich extra value meal, you'll get America's favorite fries and Coca-Cola supersized for free. You okay, little dude? Yeah. Why? You look a little pale. Free supersizing for a limited time at McDonald's. Detroit Red Wings are up by five here in the third period. See the Sabres take on the Tampa Bay Lightning at the Marine Midland Arena on Tuesday night. Call Fantastics now at 888-4000 or 1-888-223-6000 outside Erie County to reserve your seats. Long shot from the point. Goes wide of the net. Poked around on the boards as far as center. Primo could not get free. Goes after it again. Ends up inside the Buffalo lines. Yet they couldn't get it out. Get another try. Shipnick wheels one through the middle. Primo tapped it ahead. A little bump from Draper going after it again. Sabres trying to keep it in, and it squirts free and goes to center ice to McCarty. He just flips it in and heads off for a rest. Dump back through the middle to Ward. That's Buffalo's Ward. Cleared in over the line. Ran into Pusher, but trying to carry on. He hit it beside the net, then gets knocked down. And it's whipped out to center right. Things coming away. That's recovered by Buffalo and sent back through the middle again. Olsinger tapping it into the corner. Olsinger bumping with Pusher. Iserman picks it off. Iserman. Left there to Kozlov. Kozlov clears it in front and Hashik kicked that one away. And a long pass going back through center ice now, but the wings break it up, and Kozlov will slap it right back in and then gets bowled over by McKee at center ice. And an octopus was on the ice, and the linesman darts over and seizes it with a glove in his hand. Or something in his hand to pick it up <laughs> with. Gonna, anyway, I, I, he wasn't taking any chances. That's a towel. I, think, I don't think he's <laughs> going to take that home and cook it up tonight. Now, obviously, there's... <laughs> Somebody here from Detroit who threw that on. That's a tradition in the Joe Lewis Arena and was in the old Olympia. Good Lord, is that ugly. Back at center ice, Wilson giving it to Shannon. To Mike Wilson again. He couldn't get anywhere as the wings will break it up with five minutes left on the clock here in the third period. Shannon kicking it free. He tried to rip it ahead to Audette. Tapped down at the line. Kept into Audette again. Audette, whoa, way up in the air as that one deflects. The Buffalo Sabres Little over four and a half minutes remaining here in the third period at the Marine Midland Arena. Detroit. Still in front in this game by lots, by five. The car you'll never get over just landed at your Pontiac dealer. The new 1997 Wide Track Grand Prix from Pontiac. See how wider is better at your Pontiac dealers of Western New York. I saw water in the basement. Make sure you ask about that. And I think with a little work, that kitchen could be amazing. No, it's going to take more than a little work. How much are you asking? The money part is all taken care of. Oh? I'm just looking for somebody to do the work. Thought 
better off working the puck out of his own end. A cross ice pass now. Shanahan kicks it ahead. Brought in over the line by LaPointe. LaPointe back to Fedorov. It comes all the way back. And Konstantinov holding it in. Konstantinov after it again. Got away from Brown's check. Rolled into the corner to LaPointe. He'll leave it there to Shanahan. Shanahan turning in the corner, looking in front of the net. And Hashik reached out and intercepted that one. Now, Detroit Red Wings doing an outstanding job tonight of moving the puck out of their own zone. Buffalo, from time to time, has been able to get some pressure. But watch this. Here's an example. They win the faceoff, and watch what happens. If we can stop it right here, watch the pass up the middle of the ice uh, to this player right here and then watch the passing from there on as the Red Wings move it easily from their zone into the Buffalo zone. And that has been a similar story throughout the evening. Hashik comes out to play this one around on the boards, trying to get it out as Burridge gets all tangled up with Dandino. They'll kick at it along the wall and eventually hold it long enough for a face off with four minutes to go. When in a game like this, Buffalo down 6-1, to one. what you want to try to do is salvage at least what's left of the hockey game by trying to get something going, by scoring a goal or two, so you've got some kind of confidence or momentum to take you into the next game, which will be Tuesday night. Galley yeah, tried to tip it ahead. He banked it off one of the wings and ends up back at center ice. And Galley apparently picked that one out of the air with a high stick. Now, the veteran Gary Galley was telling me this morning they, they, meaning their hockey club, wanted to start a winning tradition immediately here at the Marine Midland Arena. And they're going to have to wait for that tradition to begin on Tuesday against Tampa Bay. Jam back at center once again. Plant running into Johnson. Wings Erickson recovers. Up for Dan Dano. Plant is there to rip it away, but it ends up going back to center ice. Now through the middle. Courage going after the can't get anywhere. Galli for Zitnik. Zitnik will smack one in. Irvin handling that, leaving it behind the net. Came out in front. Plant one timer right on. Vernon the save. Plant keeping it in. Wings recover again, and it's Slapped off the glass, but not out as Galley pinches in. Finally knocked out at the line by Holzinger. That deflects off into the corner. And Aaron Ward recovered and got it to the neutral area. Tap right back in again by Holzinger with less than three minutes to go. Round on the board. Jitnik takes out his man. Check that. That's McKee. And now coming in over the line, Draper. He flips one in front. The shot back for Draper, but taken away. Sabres working it out to Schmelich. Schmelich trying to gain center ice to clear it in and does. Ray goes charging in there, bumping with Pusher. But around behind the net. Ray still tied up back there, trying to kick it free. Gets all tangled up again, still shoving with McCarty. The two heavyweights are ready to go. In behind the net. Now Pusher came over. Here's McCarty and Ray. McCarty and Ray grappling behind the net, trying to get their arms free. Ray fires one. So does Ray McCarty, the two heavyweights out on the ice. Now Ray's sweater comes up and it gets pulled over his head. Now he starts firing punches anyway, flying punches over the top as the linesman will get in and break him up. Rob Ray was telling me this year, of course, with the new rule about we've seen so often Rob Ray without a jersey, shoulder pads, elbow pads. Well, it's required that the sweater be taped down or buttoned tied, down. Tied down. Yep. Tied down, and Rob Ray said he wasn't going to try to bend the rules. What he was going to try to do in the fight was to go offensive early. In other words, throw early punches, whereas before he'd wait until his equipment was on the ice and then start firing. Well, in that particular case, partner, it looked like McCarty was trying to get the sweater off of him. Absolutely. And that's perfectly okay if your opponent pulls it off. But if you don't have it tied down, then you're going to get into trouble with the referee. It was tied down pretty darn good. Five minutes each for fighting. Five minutes for fighting. 
And there's Ray going early and just missing. And McCarty just missed a few also. It's amazing, isn't it, how many of those punches really miss? It's a real art to, to be able to pull yourself away from a flying punch. Why do I have the feeling that it's center ice, that uh, as the play is back to center ice, that Ray and McCarty said, okay, let's do it. Somewhere in that scrum. It took them a few seconds to get going. And I don't think they were stone silence down there. Federoff brings it in over the line now. Less than two minutes to go. And a shot cleared off to the corner. Hand on the boards again. Back in along the boards. And we get some people throwing debris on the ice. And this is not showing too much class at this moment in time. Paper airplanes being floated up there. Federoff had his shot blocked. And it's taken away to Ward. Three on two Buffalo. Ward in over the line. Drops it back. Shot right on as Groshek let it rip. Moves up jam behind the net again. Groshek trying to catch up with it, but the wings take it away to Federoff. He'll just dribble it out to center ice to take some time off the clock and allow Detroit to make a change. Ward brings it in over the line. Dixon Ward deflected right on. Can't get a piece of it. Burridge couldn't come up with a puck. Flat after it again. Can't get it. And the wings, Federoff deflects it off a Buffalo player down the ice. Through the middle it comes. Up ahead now in over the line. Dog cut in with a shot. And he put it right through the goal crease. Sent around behind the goal. Kept in by Buffalo. Out in front again. But the wings break it up and they'll bring it back. Only a half minute remaining. Heiserman swings in over the line for the trailer. And the shot goes wide of the net. Tipped all the way back to center. Dog could not catch up with it. Heiserman. He'll leave it there to Lariano. Lost control. Shannon then fans on his pass. Kozlov tipped it back to the blue line. Taken away by Buffalo. Up ahead it comes now in over the line. Pick up Crooked shot. Vernon the save the rebound. And Vernon got an arm on that as the buzzer goes. And this first regular season game at the Marine Midland Arena did not turn out the way 18,000 and some odd fans expected that it would. No, a, really an outstanding performance by the Detroit Red Wings. And on the other side of the coin, I've been in this position years ago as a player, as a member of a hockey club uh, starting the season. You want to go out there and play an excellent game. Uh, you're mentally, at least you think you are, prepared, and it just doesn't happen. And at this stage, I guarantee you, every member of that Buffalo Sabre Hockey Club feels that he let down not only the fans and management here, but the team. And it's an awful feeling, just not a very good performance. So the guilt complex may be rampant in the Buffalo dressing room as this one is over, this first one at the Marine Midland Arena in regular season action. Detroit out on top easily, 6-1. to one. Plenty more coming up in a moment. I'm Barbara March, and I'm the latest Win for Life winner, and I love New York. A thousand a week. That's 21 Broadway shows a week. 43 carriage rides and a lot of hot dogs. You keep living, we'll keep paying. What is Pro Shop Buffalo Hardwood? They're do-it-yourself hardwood floors and floor care products. Western New York's largest and best place for original Pergo laminate floors. The largest selection of Carhartt rugged wear. Buffalo Hardwood. We'll show you how. Television stations need you. Medical companies need you. Computer companies need you. If you know electronics, top companies need you today. To develop the electronic skills employers are looking for, call ITT Technical Institute at 1-800-823-6315 for an informative brochure. That's 1-800-823-6315. But call now. Because aeronautics companies need you. Automobile companies need you. Robotics companies need you.
Welcome back to the Buffalo Sabres post-game show where the score after this one's completed, Detroit beats Buffalo 6-1. to I'm joined by Buffalo Sabres captain Pat LaFontaine, and we were just saying we wish the circumstances were a little better for this one. Uh, your reflections on the game and the team's performance. Well, I think Detroit, uh, they're a hell of a hockey team. They came out and played real well the first period and got a lot of shots, and we finally got going and played a pretty good second period. And then we had a chance uh, to, to try to even the score and try to get back in the game in the third. And before you know it, they were popping goals in. Uh, it's a frustrating night for us. It's nowhere near the way we wanted to have a home opener. It's very frustrating. To, uh, there's not going to be a good feeling in the room. Uh, uh, the only bright spot, uh, obviously, is this beautiful building and the, the ceremony for Seymour. But uh, as far as the game goes, uh, it's not a good game for a team. Yeah, from a positive standpoint, though, um, your memories of, of Seymour Knox and what this night meant to you knowing him? Well, it was a very special night, an emotional night, because uh, when I saw the banner raised, I couldn't help but think of uh, all the times he came in the locker room and sat there with his headphones on and watched and smiled and loved the game of hockey and everything he's done here in Buffalo, Western New York, and bringing this building. So um, I feel very fortunate and lucky to have known him and been a bit a part of that. But uh, that's something that was very special. And we're wearing his patch in, in honor. Uh, of him in honor of his memory and everything he stood for so hopefully we can carry it proud the rest of the season. Uh, Pat, how does the team uh, regroup now from this one and, and move on? you got Tampa on Tuesday and then Pittsburgh next Thursday. Well, we have to rebound. Uh, we have to get our scoring chances, our power play. We, we need our special teams. The guys like myself, Donald, uh, uh, the guys that relied on the score. We have to put the puck in the net to, to help our team win. Um, it, it's very frustrating. We just have to rebound and regroup and um, uh, I've been through, you've been through these situations before, if you let the lows get you two down, you can ride the lows for a while, you have to, you know, have to stay positive and get the guys to work on our mistakes, and the coaching staff will do that, and uh, we can't let it happen. Uh, uh, we got great goaltending, and Dom's uh, going to give us a chance to, to be in there every night, and uh, we have to, you know, take advantage of that situation and come up with our own goals. Thank you so much for joining us, Pat. Thank you very much. Sabres hockey continues in just a moment, moment the final score here, Sabres fall in their home opener, 6-1. to one. In a time when you can do anything without talking to anyone, a time when you have a number for this and for that, wouldn't it be good to know there are still people to help you? Well, at Independent Health, your coverage includes more than just benefits. It includes people. People who work for us whose only job is to work for you. People who respond to your needs quickly. Because with us, you are not a number, but you will be counted. Independent health, it's what we do that makes us different. Hello everybody, I'm Jim Brunson. I'm Howard Simon. And if you missed Fan TV this past week, you missed Todd Collins, Marcel Dion, Hank Goldberg, and Larry Carrier. On Monday, a complete breakdown of the Bills Dolphins game, plus the NBA week starts. Raptors heat come to town. We'll talk to Isaiah Thomas, Pat Riley, Alonzo Mourning, and Marcus Camby. And we'll be all over Big Four College Basketball, John Feline and Jack Armstrong in studio. Fan TV, your voice, your choice. Joe Montana, the premier quarterback of the 1980s owning four Super Bowl rings. Dan Marino, he's broken all the major NFL passing records and still going. They're both headed to the Football Hall of Fame in Canton. Now available for the first time is the quarterback series of gold trading cards. Marino and Montana have both worn league MVP crowns and are honored with these beautifully detailed 23 karat gold limited edition trading cards. These gold cards honoring the careers of football's greatest quarterbacks of the 80s and 90s are available individually or together. You get your choice of the Marino or Montana gold card each with its own protective acrylic holder and official certificate of authenticity for only $29.95 each. Hurry, supply is limited. Here's how to order. To order your gold cards, call 1-800-939-7567 or send check or money order for $29.95 each plus $3.95 shipping and handling to SSCA Quarterback Legends, P.O. Box 2648, Grand Central Station, New York, New York. New York residents add sales tax. The Detroit Red Wings ran roughshod over the Buffalo Sabres in their regular season home opener at the new Marine Midland Arena. Detroit coming out on top, 6-1. to one. Well, I'm sure that uh, most Buffalo fans are not hoping that this will be a regular Saturday night occurrence. Uh, the Sabres don't play home games very often on Saturday. They will this year. 
and they were certainly outclassed tonight. Well, they, they were. Uh, Detroit, uh, clearly the better hockey club right from the beginning of this hockey game. Uh, gee, I mean, the, the passing and the creativity of the Detroit Red Wings tonight was, was far superior to Buffalo, and we had some beautiful goals that were scored in this game. Oh, for sure, yes. and uh, you have to give the Detroit Red Wings uh, full credit for it, and in particular on the, the goal that they scored to make it 3 nothing. And that was uh, really the one, I think, that put Buffalo away. It was a shorthanded goal for the Detroit Red Wings. It was scored by Tim Taylor. As Taylor took advantage of Derek Plant was back playing uh, defense uh, while Buffalo had a mad advantage. And Taylor did an excellent job of working his way to the net and then beating Dominic Hasek. But, gee, I mean, give him credit. Uh, he knew that Plant was playing defense and took advantage of it. Well, we're going to give you an idea now to take a look at the only Buffalo goal that was scored in the game. And the Sabres really did not get a oodles of opportunities in this game. No, no, they didn't. Uh, but Mike Pekka, who ends up scoring this goal uh, on a... Oh, I beg your pardon. This is the last goal by the Detroit Red Wings that, that made it 6-1. to one. And that was scored by Dandino, and quite a story uh, on that youngster. Uh, he played 19 minutes on defense last night for the Detroit Red Wings. He's he's a forward, uh, actually. He didn't play defense at all in junior, uh, but Scotty moved him up and forward tonight, and he scores his first goal of the season, and it was a good one. Well, and after the Detroit club went ahead 3 nothing, Buffalo scored 3-1. to one. Now, you had to think at that point, well, the Sabres are at least going to take a run at the Red Wings. That's when they fell apart. Yeah, they did. Uh, and Detroit uh, just took the game right back uh, under their wing uh, and really put them away uh, with some uh, outstanding plays. And, you know, if you look at the goals tonight, Detroit was scoring on the rush frequently. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, uh, one, one of the keys uh, in my mind tonight was for the Sabres not to turn the puck over at the Detroit blue line, not to turn it over in the neutral zone. And that happened numerous times, and Detroit took advantage. Well, the stats, I'm sure, will bear all that out. The fact that the Detroit Red Wings uh, certainly were the ones that were in charge, rode must, must, much of this game with the uh, shots on goal, of course, in that department. Uh, Face-offs were very close, but the odd man rushes, of course, just uh, give you the opportunities that led to 25 scoring chances. That's, that, that's an awful lot of scoring yeah, chances, uh, sure 25, uh, and I believe uh, that, uh, that that was certainly, I'm sure, an accurate figure, but uh, also the odd man rushes, and, and that's a result of, of turnovers. Uh, that's a, a result of create uh, a creative offensive players, and boy, Detroit has uh, just a plethora of those. Well, we certainly knew that the Sabres were going to have their hands full tonight. I don't think we thought that they were going to be spilling over quite as much as they were. No, and, and I think uh, just picking up on what Pat LaFontaine uh, t told Dennis Williams, he said, we were, we were totally frustrated. He said, uh, this was the last thing that we wanted to happen tonight, and he basically said uh, they were embarrassed over their performance. But uh, as he also said... Uh, when you're low, you can't let yourself sink down too far. So uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, this club can bounce back. Well, the Discover card third period scoring summary will indicate just what happened in this hockey game and why the Detroit Red Wings went on to win it so relatively easy as Tim Taylor got the goal uh, very early, and that was the shorthanded one, and that certainly hurt. Then, as we mentioned, Mike Pekka getting his first from Galley and Daw, and then the Red Wings coming back with three consecutive goals. And let's go downstairs now and join Ted Nolan's press conference. No, you can't be too happy with uh, any time you lose a hockey game, but uh, particularly the way we lost tonight. And, but uh, you, you have to give Detroit a lot of credit. That, um, they're a standing cup contending team the last uh, two, three years, and, and they proved uh, why tonight. They, a lot of the goals that they scored was they were pretty goals. And uh, they're, they showed why uh, they're one of the top teams in the league. And, and tonight, uh, I thought we'd just uh, maybe give him a little bit too much respect. Ted, you didn't do a lot of hitting tonight. Uh, Rob Race, I know you're, a lot of your hitters weren't dressed tonight, but still it didn't seem like there was a lot of hitting in that game. No, there's there's a lot of corrections in our game we have to have to correct next couple of days, and, and we're going to do that. But uh, tonight uh, we're, we'll save our, the corrections for an address when we're going to talk to the team later. But uh, right now, you know, Detroit played well. You have to give them credit for it, and uh, they, they beat us. Ted, you made a comment last year after one of the games saying that you wouldn't blame the fans if they didn't come back. Do you feel the same way tonight? Well, you know, we got a very young hockey club this year, and, and Detroit uh, uh, proved once again, I'll have to say that once again, you know, they're a Stanley Cup contending team, and, you know, any time you get a, a, a lose a great player in Primo and get another great player in Shanahan back, uh, that shows the depth in that organization. So uh, tonight uh, the fans witnessed a very good hockey club, and, and tonight we weren't a very good hockey club. Ted, before the game, you mentioned the fact that 
he wanted to try to work on uh, channeling the emotion of the night, of the opening night and the pregame ceremony and everything. Do you think your guys did a good job of that in the first period? Well, I don't know. We, we channeled it. Uh, there was no emotion. You know, we, didn't, uh, we didn't come up with any, any jump. Uh, one of the questions were asked, we didn't finish any checks. And, and uh, part of that reason is we, we have a lot of our checkers out of the lineup. And, uh, you know, a lot of the guys that play tonight are not naturally hard-hitting type of guys. You know, Bobby Bugner, Brad May, and uh, those type of guys hit a lot. Ted, though, doesn't that, doesn't that lack of emotion surprise you, though, being a first game in this building? Uh, you figure that you want to go out and impress people. Uh, you know, you're coming off a win. I mean, don't all those things put together in light of the lack of emotion, doesn't that surprise you at all? It, it surprises. Like I said, I'm not going to bash, uh, bash our hockey club. There's a lot of things that we have to correct and we have to improve upon and uh, one of the things we have to play with emotion and one of the things we we stated earlier is we never want to be outworked and, and tonight or tonight we we didn't work and that's one of the things that uh, we're going to make some corrections on so okay. i don't mean any disrespect by asking this question you didn't play tonight but how much of tonight's performance falls on coaching well you know like i said you know the team wasn't uh, ready to play and I'll, I'll take full responsibility for that um, you know they they weren't ready to play and i'm part of the team and one of the things that um, you, know, the, the, you have to give Detroit credit. They're, they're a good hockey club. We came off a, a very grueling uh, trip up in the, in the west. We got back uh, 11 o'clock the day before. We didn't really have time to get our feet back on the ground. And that's not excuses. Those are facts. Can you imagine a worse uh, case scenario than starting in this place with a game like that? No, it, it, was, it was ugly. Yeah, it was, there was no excuse for it. So did you think about pulling Dominic after the fifth or sixth goal? Did, did you think about maybe getting Treffel up in there, kind of get him out of the fire, or no? Well, when we call timeout, uh, you know, one thing with Dominic, he's a competitor, and uh, we asked him if he wanted to come out, and uh, by no stretch of imagination was any any goals his fault. Uh, they had a lot of uh, numerous outnumbering situations on us, and, and they capitalized, but it wasn't wasn't Donald or uh, Dominic's fault, and he wanted to stay in right to the end. That's the type of guy he is. Ted, was that why you called the timeout down by five goals, just to try and get to kind of collect the team's head there at the end? Yeah, you know, we try to refocus the team. The one thing we uh, try to establish here is uh, being a hard-working team and and, uh, and never quit. And for two minutes and 45 seconds, it looked like we quit. They, they popped three quick ones and went from 3-1 to 6-1. Is there anything you saw that you liked, Ted? Not tonight. A clearly disheartened Sabre head coach Ted Nolan as he makes his way back to meet with Dennis Williams and Dennis will be talking to Ted Nolan in just a moment. In a time when you can do anything without talking to anyone, a time when you have a number for this and for that, wouldn't it be good to know there are still people to help you? Well, at Independent Health, your coverage includes more than just benefits. It includes people. People who work for us whose only job is to work for you. People who respond to your needs quickly. Because with us, you are not a number, but you will be counted. Independent Health. It's what we do that makes us different. I'm Barbara March, and I'm the latest Win for Life winner. And I love New York. A thousand a week. That's 21 Broadway shows a week. 43 carriage rides and a lot of hot dogs. You keep living, we'll keep paying. Catch Fan Forum Mondays live at 5.30 on Empire Sports Network. It's the Labatt Hockey Hotline. The Sabres christened new building in the Marine Midland Arena. They get thumped by the Red Wings. Mike Robitaille is up next, and we'll hear from you as well. Hang in there. Certainly a disappointing beginning to Marine Midland Arena. Lack of emotion, lack of physical play, lack of scoring, lack of a W. Well, I'll tell you, I, I'm just so happy right now that I haven't got high blood pressure because <laughs> the top of my head is blowing off right now. Yeah, I'm really disappointed. I think of all the work and the money and all the good deeds that went into the preparation of this night. Uh, 
except for the effort from the hockey players, and that wasn't there. And they're the ones got one guy's a walk out with the money in the pocket and another good night's work. Are you kidding me? This is one of the most important nights in the history of this organization. And what do you hear? The old story, Brian, you know, when you don't play well, all you hear all the time is, well, give the other team credit. Boy, they played great. Man, the Red Wings are a great team. If we would have had our checkers in, and if we would have had our hitters in, and we have to pass more, and we're going to have to shoot more, and, and we, we, give me a break, will you? Show up and play hockey. This is probably the most important night in the history of this organization. Show up and play. That's the end of that. There, I feel better. You all right? Well, I, I'm really upset. I, I, don't I can't make an excuse for them. I can't. Nothing. Nothing was out there. No hitting, no passing, no shooting. Feathers. Have a sip. I need more than a sip. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hockey Hotline on the Empire Sports Network. Because millions of tons of road salt, freezing temperatures, and wet weather put Western New York in the Rust Belt, turn to Rust Stop. Rust Stop is a revolutionary new way to fight your car's worst enemy. Rust Stop is the only oil-based rust-proofing treatment available for new and used cars. Our special formula and high-pressure applications penetrates into seams and crevices that waxes and paints can't. New vehicles are given a lifetime guarantee. Protect your investment with Rust Stop. Available at all Schmitz locations, dealers in Batavia, Medina, and Clarence. Rust Stop. It works. But someday, someday it'll be a great country. You think so? Absolutely. You see, they shall perfect a game called hockey, invent the telephone, rescue England and France twice, and make one incredibly good beer. A true Canadian lager. Oh, the Blue. Yes, that's it. The Blue. True Canadian lager. Welcome back to the Labatt Hockey Hotline. This first period, pretty dismal stuff. Yeah, it was a great start for the Wings, and uh, they were the superior hockey club tonight from start to finish. You'll see it when they show the replays. Well, let's do that right now. Let's get you down there, of course. Uh, christening a new building, you knew there'd be uh, excitement before the start of this one, and as we check it out, there's the banner in honor of Seymour Knox III. The Sabres come out, a little fireworks act, and the Red Wings put the fireworks up early. Uh, here you see Doug Brown break in on goal. Huge save by Hashik in the early going for Ted Nolan. But Hashik can't hold them off here. Off a of face-off, Mike Pekka will be outworked by Igor Larionov, who will get it into the slot area. Vacheslav Kozlov will bury it past Hashik at 15:41. It's one nothing win. Pekka gets stripped of the puck and totally outworked. Here's the proof of the pudding right here. Now watch Wilson, number four. He doesn't know what he's doing. Should I go behind the net? No, I'll go out in front. No man's land. He doesn't do it either. And he's standing there, and the guy gets the free shot. The guy comes up to about his waist. Mike, talk about this first period. First period, you figure, you know, you're going to come out, you're going to hit everything in sight. Detroit outshoots the Sabres 19-6. to Yeah, and it was Hasek once again, not before the game was over. This wasn't a great night for Dominic Hasek. If you notice, uh, he said, well, it wasn't Dominic's fault. It was Dominic. That was a bad night. I don't care what they say. It was not a great night for Dominic Hasek. With the first period, the mold was set. And you could see the, po the position the players were going to take in their effort department. Obviously, that's disappointing in its own right. But you would think at least the first couple of moments of the second period, they're going to come out and yeah. well, storm. Watch. watch. Wrong. Again, let's get you to the second period where 
uh, the Red Wings will come out and do some damage. Who is Jamie Pusher? Pusher. Look, I, well, <laughs> Wayne, Gretz up? Wayne Gretzky on that play gets it out to Eisenman, who uh, Hashik does all he can. This is a goal anyway. He throws the stick. But uh, how do you get this pass up to Lariano? Where do these players come from? I never heard of it. Look at this. How come other teams get these players? Look at the pass he makes. In goes Eiserman. He'll beat Hasek, he'll go to the outside and just put it into a big yawning old net. But a very, very bad read by the Buffalo defense. Yeah, Eisenman may never get an easier goal. Now, we're talking about the lack of physical play. We're watching Mike Pekka on this one. He already had a chance to hit. This is supposed to be a big, rugged centerman. Watch. Does he hit this guy? No. Bails out, goes the other direction. What is he there for to score a goal? This guy is a hitting forward. Start hitting someone. But, Brian, watch at the other end. The biggest player right here is Shanahan. He goes in with Plant. Shanahan will just walk away almost from two people here, like a, just like a flea, bats him off the backside, get out of the way, excuse me, I'm going to the front of the net. There's a problem with this team being small? Yes, I would think so. And watch, they'll go down to the other end. The biggest player of the Buffalo Sabre team is Smelly. Watch what happens at the other end. Now, who wants to win the game, folks? You tell me, is that not an example? There it is, physical play. It's 2 nothing Red Wings after 2. And then, uh, I guess to, to put uh, salt in the wound, the Sabres start the third period on the power play, and the Wings come out and get a shorthander. Yeah, and, and they just continue to roll, and they picked up their confidence level, went up, and they're just wheeling and dealing at this point. They knew they had some patsies, and they were going to walk all over them. Get, build their plus and minuses up. Let's go to that third period, and we'll show you this goal. Now, the Red Wings do take advantage on this play. Plan on the point has to play defense. And right here, forget about it, Tim Taylor turns him inside out and scores 51 seconds into the third. It's 3 nothing. Talk about physical, Mike. Dixon Ward gets rocked here. Here's the example you were talking about. Physical play. This is a little different, isn't it? Except it's on the receiving end. Down he goes. This is a team that's winning. You'd think it'd be the other way around. Here's they one needed of, some hits desperately. One of the best hits of the night for the Sabres. One of the few. Jason Doss starts the forecheck. It results in the goal for well, Pekka. Okay, but don't call that a hit. That was more of a push. Great play here by Galley. And he does this very effectively with Patty LaFontaine. But he fakes the shot, Brian. They go for it. And he slides it's it off to Peck, who very smartly played on the outside. This is unbelievable here. This is European hockey. Look at the Red Wings create the open <laughs> ice. They whirl it around. Eisenman, the super pass to Lariana. But watch the replay, Mike. They just wing this thing around. It's on a yo-yo here. Three-way passing play. All right, so we have one right now. There's two. Excuse me, a two-way passing play. And a beautiful shot. He didn't risk it. He slapped it. He slapped it right in off the post. I know you love this pass. Fedorov sends LaPointe in all alone. This is dandy. Play of the game. Where's the defense? I mean, everyone is so confused right now. They're just tripping over their own defense. Just bad reads all night from the defense. Does that picture sum it up? Oh, well, yeah, of you desperation. Know. I mean, when's the last time you like looked that. at that goaltender? I'll tell you, with his head down. Usually he's the guy that's just keeping this hockey club in the game. He didn't keep this hockey club in the game tonight. And all hell broke loose at the auditorium. I still call it the auditorium after all these. <laughs> down at the marina. Yeah. Well, Wings add another one. Final score of 6-1. to one. Not the kind of start the Sabres were looking for. Disappointing effort, to say the very least. More on the Labatt Hockey Hotline in a moment. Leo DiPaolo's Italian dressing and marinade brings old world Italian flavor to any salad or recipe you prepare at home. Available at all Tops, Wegmans, Jubilee, and Quality Markets. May I have your attention, please? If you're currently paying too much for insurance, the following is of interest to you. There is an alternative. Willoughby Insurance ensures the lowest rates and a choice of coverage that works. With the lowest rates in western New York and with the lowest down payment, Willoughby will save you money. Willoughby Insurance, the originals, serving western New York for over 50 years. Remember, Willoughby will when nobody will, with seven locations to insure you. Find us fast in the 9X Yellow Pages. If you need a Visa credit card, we have a special offer just for you. We guarantee to give you a credit card with no security deposit required, regardless of your past credit history. Almost everyone will be approved for a Visa card, even if you've been turned down before. If you meet our minimum requirements, your approval is guaranteed. Our offer is for an unsecured credit card. This means that you're not required to send in a security deposit. Don't miss this limited offer to obtain a Visa card with no security deposit. Call our number now. An application will be sent to you immediately. Here we go, folks. Go Bills, for we are here to cheer for you. Go Bills, we are your passing through. 
The Marv Levy Show with Paul McGuire, Mondays at 8 on Empire Sports Network. It's the Laban Hockey Hotline. Opening up Marine Midland Arena, Red Wings win it 6-1 to one all over Buffalo tonight. Yeah, you know the most positive thing of the night? That we have a guest right now from the Sabres, Jason Duh, came in here. I don't think that's a really pleasant task, but anyway, someone showed up. All right, well, let's uh, get down to Marine Midland Arena, and Howard Simon joins us, and Jason Daw is uh, with Howard. Obviously, a, a rough beginning uh, for the Sabres tonight, Howard. Yeah, Brian uh, and Mike, obviously, you guys have pointed it out, uh, rough everything for the Sabres tonight from the get-go to the very end. Jason Daw joins us here uh, outside the Sabres locker room to try and uh, talk about uh, this game tonight. Uh, Jason, I'm sure you heard it already from Ted. Uh, Ted Nolan, the head coach, not a very happy man here. Uh, obviously, uh, let's talk about exactly uh, how the team uh, came out so flat tonight. Well, <clears throat> uh, you can sit back and make excuses. And, uh, you know, obviously, uh, everybody right now is really disappointed in the locker room. Uh, the only thing is you got to look in the mirror and just say we, uh, we came out flat tonight and uh, <clears throat> maybe uh, sat back a lot too much. <laughs> um, it's one of those things that... Uh, you know, we're just going to have to uh, work harder in practice to try and improve. That was uh, definitely a poor outing by all of us. Third period, they get the shorthanded goal. You come back, make it 3-1, and then uh, all of a sudden three quick goals. Ted felt uh, at that team that at that point, rather, the team quit. Did you guys sense that uh, guys cashed in at that point? Well, you know, it's maybe it's bad to say that we did, but, uh, you know, uh, when you're down well, maybe 4-1 or whatever at that point, 5-1, it's... Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's disappointing, especially against a team like Detroit. Um, you know, teams, when we play teams like Detroit, we can't afford to sit back and just sit back and watch them, uh, like, you know, it's, we got to go right at them and show them no respect at all, and we didn't do that tonight. You know, it was funny, last year, we were pointing this out coming into the game, against teams like Detroit, Rangers, Philly, Pittsburgh, you guys seemed to play your best games, but it was the reverse tonight, like you were saying, it looked like you gave them too much respect. Last year, that didn't seem to be the case, and you played well against them. Well, I can guarantee you that... Uh, from the response that's in the dressing room right now, I can guarantee you when we play uh, uh, our next game and the, and the games after, we're definitely going to uh, put in a better effort. That was definitely uh, you know, frustrating for everybody, to say the least. The night, uh, opening night, the arena and all on the line tonight, uh, were, were you guys, it was, was there emotion on the bench? We were all expecting this team would come out flying and it just didn't seem to be there. You know, I, in the locker room, I, I thought that we were going to come out flying also. Um, you know, I really don't have any excuses for why we didn't. It was just uh, one of those things that maybe, uh, you know, we didn't really have any legs, uh, a lot of a lot of distractions before the game. But let, once again, it's a, just a cop out. It's just uh, you got to look in the mirror and just uh, face the facts. Hot man rushes again, uh, hurting you guys tonight. Uh, Ted talked about making some corrections. Uh, so there were a lot of breakdowns uh, in play, forwards and defensemen in tonight. Well, I, from a player's perspective, I noticed, uh, you know, at the blue line, there were a lot of turnovers at their blue line and at our blue line. Those things are, are very costly, and if, if it's not costly right away, it will in the long run. And, uh, you know, those type of things, we're going to have to correct and correct in a hurry if we're going to, you know, go any further in this league. Jason Dawes with us. Let's go back to our studios and bring in uh, Mike Robitaille and Brian Blessing. Guys? Hey, listen, before you let Jason go, hey, Jason? Yes. Look at... Tell us a little bit about the dressing. Share this with the fans. They have to realize what's going on tomorrow and how difficult this is going to be when you walk into that dressing room the, uh, tomorrow morning. Well, you know, uh, I got out of the shower and I was, uh, you know, I'm looking around and you know, everybody's just sitting there, you know, in the locker room, uh, in our lounge area, watching, the, watching this on TV and just, uh, you know, very depressed. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where... Uh, you know, it's, it's embarrassing to say the least, especially in front of a full house and, uh, you know, everybody was expecting a good turnout and it was just, uh, you know, to say the least, everybody was very glum. Well, I'm going to tell you, young man, I appreciate your honesty. You're yeah. not taking me for a ride right now and you're right. There are no excuses, no, Jason. That's... You're going to have to deal with it the hard way. Well, we're going to have to face the facts and, you know, criticism is what we, uh, what this job sometimes is all about and, you know, we're, you know, uh, at this point we're able to face it. It's just, uh, but I can guarantee to the fans out there that we're definitely going to come back with a better effort next time. Jason, maybe the biggest question... Uh